Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting. This is the July uh, Board of Architectural Meeting, Board of Architectural Review Meeting for the <coughs> City of Charlottesville. We start the meeting with matters from the public. Um, any matters from the public not on the agenda? Good afternoon. Um, I'm Jack Masloff with WA Lynch Roofing Company here in Charlottesville. And we're under contract with to re-roof 101 East Water Street and um, going through the, the uh, permitting process, um, Mary Joy called me and asked me some questions about whether we're, what we're doing with the building because of where it's located. Uh, and she asked me a certainly pertinent question, are we, are we altering the, the, uh, the look of the building in any fashion? And we were, are planning or were planning on installing a metal cap on the parapets as part of the roof. One elevation of the building currently has a metal cap. Um, there's, there's four elevations. It's a rectangular building. One elevation has a metal cap. The two others that could use one probably did at some point. I don't know, but they don't now. Um, from a functionality of the roof <coughs> standpoint and <coughs> preservation of the masonry, um, you know, we would like to do that. The owner would like that to be done. So um, I don't want to take up a bunch of your time. I know I have to go through a more um, official process here, but I did make a little handout for everybody um, with just some information on it. Um, would like to distribute that, and I think we'll, I think Mary Joy, at, there's a, I need to apply, is right. If you want to change the appearance, yeah. Right, right, with, which I will do. With your permission, I'll distribute this with you guys, y'all all, you, all at this point, um, and um, we'll, uh, sorry, one more to have copies for, I think for everybody, and I can, I can um, provide more if needed, so, um, I do have color samples um, that match the adjacent part of this same building. It's, it's a lower lower level um, that does have a metal parapet coping on it now. So I'll leave. I just brought three samples of this with me at this point. So um, anyway, okay. Thank you for your time. I've never been to one of these, so I'm going to hang out for a while. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other matters from the public? If not, we'll move to the consent agenda. Consent agenda has uh, three items on it. Uh, the minutes from last, last month, June 21st, 2011. Uh, Modification for 513 West Main Street. This is an application that's already been reviewed and for which I will actually recuse myself from that one item since I haven't participated in the other <coughs> discussions on it. Uh, and then number three is uh, 1824 University Circle. This is uh, the Hillel Jewish Center at UBA and this is for uh, modifications uh, eliminating two trellises in the trash enclosure connected with the previously approved project. Are there any issues with, that anyone has with anything on the consent agenda? Uh, on the minutes, I'd like to make one simple correction. Page two, uh, where it says questions or comments from the board. It said that, uh, it states that I'd like the ceiling replaced with wall board and not bead board. I simply asked the question of which table we'll use. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else? Um, <clears throat> page five. Questions or comments from the board? Um, Mr. Adams wanted to know if there was a problem with the existing doors. I think it was the tree out front that I asked about. Down okay. the bottom of the page. Fourth yep. one. Any others? <clears throat> if not, we have a motion for the consent agenda. I'm, I move the approval of the consent agenda 
uh, with the revisions to the minutes. And I will recuse myself from the minutes. <coughs> myself from the minutes as well. Second. Second. <laughs> Do we have enough people voting to approve the minutes? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, all in, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. That takes care of the consent agenda <coughs> items. Uh, and that moves us to um, projects and noncompliance. Mary Joy, is there anything? <coughs> Doesn't have to be, but if you. I did contact Judy Mueller about the lights, the street lights on West Main Street, and she said she would look into it. Great. She didn't say any more than that, but at least she's aware of it, you know, that you have a problem with that. So okay. I'll keep I'll keep on top of that one. Uh, Mr. Check, I asked Major a question. Uh, I see you get the issue of the painting of the on the garage on North First Street resolved. Was that much of a hassle? One of them's been removed, right? right. The one on the brick, which was the, the major concern. So. Yeah, um, I guess we'll still work on the one on the door. If they want to keep it, they would come to you all for approval. That's the process. So they have to do one thing or the other. Yeah. I think. Thanks. Anything else? I missed something on this, but I don't know if that matters. Can we retroactively change something? <laughs> um, so this is for the meeting minutes? Yeah, page okay. 10, the last sentence, um, Humes, and it says Hughes. Is the board okay with absorbing the correction of the misspelling? Yes. Good. Um, okay. With that, if there's nothing else, we're going to move on to... Uh, Previously considered items, number one is 503 West Main Street. This is for the reconstruction of two chimneys and and the apron wall between associated with a, a previous demolition that was unapproved. And this has been approved and the approvals expired? That's correct. Correct. Um, you approved it in uh, about, well, May of 2010. And that uh, approval has expired. The applicant didn't apply for an extension before it expired. So now the, um, we asked the applicant to reapply so he could continue to work on this. And um, he's seeking reapproval for the reconstruction of the two brick chimneys. And they have a connecting curtain wall, which is uh, in a, an element of federal style architecture. And those were located on the west side of that building on West Main Street. And um, your previous conditions of approval, you had several conditions that he had to meet before he could actually get a building permit and then start reconstructing. And those had to do with um, using uh, mortar with high lime content, um, the chimney width in north-south direction aligned and based on the old chimney stack. Uh, the chimney will be rectilinear to match what originally existed. And then you suggested that he look at the Dinsmore House on West Main Street and also um, uh, other, uh, as well as other reconstruction for similar details and to look at the original chimneys on this property in the photographs. And then um, you asked him to match the color of the brick as closely as possible. So I actually spoke to the architect that worked on this reconstruction drawing and suggested that he those were fairly simple conditions and suggested that he tried to move forward on them to get some completed so that the applicant could then, you know, apply for a building permit as soon as possible. So um, I made him aware of that. Um, I thought they would be here, but um, I don't see them in the audience. So that's all I have. I would suggest reapproving it so that he could move forward with this project. Can I ask you a question before we... Um, do we have the the authority or the ability to put a time limit on this? Um, you, I, do, I think that as you a, could. As a condition um, of, the of the approval? I mean, it's good. When you approve it, it's good for one year. I mean, but the thing is that um, he's been in, you know, he's 
been in violation. It's not like it's a regular application. So I think regardless of what you do, the city attorney's office is working with him on this and trying to get it moving along. Okay. So, you know, so I think that it would, you, you can, and that would be fine, but I think that we will do that anyway. Okay. I don't believe the applicant's present, but in case you're invisible, nothing to add. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public, I should have said first? Questions from the board? Comments from the public? <coughs> Comments from the board? To my mind, this is straightforward. Uh, in terms of approving it again, I do feel like there wasn't much progress made over the last year. And if it's serious, if it's simply going to be a series of renewed <coughs> approvals, um, that's not very helpful. But the fact that the city has its own path to take in terms of discussing with them. Uh, the applicant did share with me several months ago that he was having trouble finding a mason who would do the work for him. And just for the record. <laughs> I would think right now would be a good time to find a mason. <laughs> you mustn't be looking very hard. <laughs> um, okay, but I would still uh, I would support this in the same way that I think we supported it previously for approval with all of the same, same conditions. conditions. Yeah. And unless there's discussion, I would make that motion. Same conditions and recommendations. Is, okay. Yeah. So having considered the standards set forth within the city code, including city design guidelines, for rehabilitation, I move to find that the proposed design for the reconstruction of the west chimneys and the curtain wall satisfies the BAR's criteria and is compatible with this property and others in the district, and that the BAR approves the application as submitted with all of the original recommendations and conditions attached. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. <clears throat> okay. That moves us to item number two, which is 422 East Main Street. Um, this is the new cafe, sky bar, series of wood terraces. Okay, so the applicant is back requesting approval for some new work and also three revisions to the original approved design. Uh, the new work consists of three wood platforms, uh, outdoor platforms, and one set of temporary steps to accommodate the uh, to accommodate um, a level sidewalk cafe level cafe sidewalk cafe seating on Fifth Street Southeast. So, in other words, they want to um, right now Fifth Street is slopes to the south and. In order to provide cafe seating on that side of the building, there is no room for a cafe on the Main Street side. Um, they are seeking to put in three plat wood platforms that will provide level seating. So um, at the upper end of each of these platforms, there's a steel ramp so that it will provide handicap access. And then at the lower end of each platform, there's a step down. So you can get the picture from the drawing that was submitted. And then that, those will be surrounded by the standard black steel bollards and chains. They're also proposing wood planters on the lower side of each platform and also along the window at the center platform. And the proposed wood is, um, I don't know how to pronounce this, uh, Kebony, I would say, Kebony? Okay, Kebony, and um, that is similar to um, teak or ipe or other tropical varieties of wood. It acquires a silver gray patina over time, but um, um, Marty will be able to explain to you. She has a sample, and they do intend to um, put oil on it so it doesn't change color. And then there are three proposed revisions to the original plan. Um, the front canopy, the dark gray aluminum canopy, now is extended around the corner onto the Fifth Street facade to the end of the front window opening, and it will project just 12 inches from the Fifth Street facade. Um, also, on Fifth Street side, um, part of the, the rear part of that building is older brick, 
and they would like to, um, this says sandblast, they've since adjusted it and are proposing to um, use high pressure water to remove the loose paint and let it um, sort of fade naturally. Um, and that will leave more of a model finish rather than repainting it, but the bricks on the front corner, the newer bricks, will be repainted off-white, so they'll be a, it'll look like the drawing rendering. And then the third change is the window head canopy heights. The window head heights on Fifth Street are now slightly lower, three or four inches, than the bottom of the corner canopy and the mall slider window head. And the reasons for that change, um, the applicant can explain, or they're also outlined in the narrative. Um, so my comments, I did suggest a stain or finish on the wood decking, um, such as you required at Zocalo when they put in the Ipe wood on their patio, and it sounds like the applicant's on board to do that. Uh, the wood platforms are removable. Um, uh, city conditions would be to maintain a 16-foot fire lane between the outside of the um, uh, decking and then the closest obstruction, which would be the I think they're uh, ginkgo trees on Fifth Street. So um, the applicant's aware of that requirement. And also they, are, um, they should remove the platforms in the winter during off-season for cafes. And then um, the third thing I said was to um, comment on the um, sand blasting process, which has been amended to be water pr high pressure water treatment. So um, those are my comments. And um, Marty Rowan is representing the applicant. Chair, while she's walking up, would you give the results of the previous application? Previous application with respect to the um, 503 West Main Street was approved. The application was with all the same conditions and recommendations attached as previously. <laughs> That's for your benefit. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> they still don't get it. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> you said 530, but okay. Well, it's, the meeting starts at 5, and it just goes in order. Thank you. Um, please go ahead Hi. to the person who's doing this in the, in the correct order. For hearing uh, us again and bearing with our, our process of making some changes and additions, um, the things that I wanted to, uh, the issues I wanted to highlight, first of all, uh, the Kevin E. Decking, as Mary Joy um, uh, mentioned, uh, it is actually my understanding from um, Alloy, who are, are, are builders on our team, that uh, the Kevin E. is actually not a wood species, but a process that can be, that is like burning the wood, as I understand it. And it, it, it can be done to um, various species, and I have to admit, I didn't come well prepared, and I forget. I think this, I'm not sure what the species is, but this is it. This is a sample. And the client, uh, this is also just for what it's worth, this is going to be on our roof deck as well. And um, the client has specifically recommended, uh, asked that it be oiled so that it does not fade to gray, as it will. So we will do that both on the roof deck, which is not part of this application, but also on this um, sidewalk. Okay. Um, do you want me to answer questions about the deck before we move on to other things, or you want me to go through all my little explanations? I, I think if there's anything you want to add to Mary Joyce, and then okay. we'll go to questions, and then okay. if they're towards so, you, you can answer them. And okay. So uh, I'm going to elaborate on the one thing Mary Joy asked me to elaborate, and that is the, the slight difference in um, window height from the front of the building to the side of the building, um, and I, I think as briefly, as simply as possible as I can explain it, this was the result of a field condition. It was not intended, and it, it's a it's a result of actually a sort of a confluence of conditions, one of which is that the slope of the floor actually slants from the front of the building to the end of the building, and the second of which is that the mall slopes from the corner to the east. And um, both of those things happened for about two-ish inches. And the result of it, we, because of the timing of this project, we unfortunately did go ahead and order these big sliders for the front and the side to be um, 
uh, nine feet, 108 inches deep, and and um, so when the floor tipped down a little bit towards the side, um, that uh, opening dropped a couple of inches, and then as it also emerged, that on the front, I guess I could show you this on the front, it, it, it the mall goes up a couple of inches on this side, and because this is a slider. Um, uh, you know, it can't sit below, for water reasons, it can't sit below the mall. So that one went up a couple of inches and the other one went down a couple of inches and we're sorry that we were not able to control that uh, situation. Now the one thing I do want to point out is that one of the ways in which we tried to mitigate this little was, um, and also because we think it's, it's a good thing as well, is to take the, the aluminum canopy that had, had previously been shown extending to the front and to wrap it around the corner. Um, and so on your 3D pictures, I think is the best way to see it. You can see that it comes around the corner just one foot. And so what happens is, as, as I think this is probably the best of you to see this, that because this, because this canopy now projects a little bit behind the facade and because it's made out of aluminum, whereas when you walk outside now and you see that behind um, behind this front canopy is this new piece of big hunk of, of steel I-beam which looks like these steel I-beams which will be exposed, but this one will be covered and it will actually be projecting so that the lack of uh, alignment that you see right now pretty glaringly will be you know, mitigated by the fact that one of them is the bottom of a plane and the other of them is the, the recess of, of, of this steel beam. So I hope that explains how we got there and how we hope that it will not be near, nearly so jarring as it currently appears. Thank you. The other thing is that um, I'm bringing, I'm really sorry, one more uh, little change or at least clarification. Um, this is a matte black penny tile which we're proposing to install at the um, little recessed front entry on the mall and um, I can pass these around if that would be useful and while I'm doing that I'll also show you that we have a step up sample which is behind for the, uh, the sign panel at the front and I wanted to actually say um, one thing about the uh, painting of the brick at Mary Joy, actually to correct Mary Joy who never makes mistakes, but, but the, the front brick is actually not new brick. It's actually just the more finished brick that they, you know, traditionally made in, in these commercial buildings, whether the mall side and around the corner would be made out of the fancy sort of finished stuff, and the back is this funky softer brick. So the point is that we're, we're proposing to rough up through um, power washing rather than sandblasting the back, you know, side brick, and paint, repaint the existing more finished brick. And we feel, as I'm sure you all are aware, that this is, we want to highlight that inconsistency between the side and the front, which is one of the traditional, you know, commercial building things. Okay. Thank you. Is that it? Yes. Very good. That's it. Are there any questions from the public on this? <clears throat> questions from the board? I got a, a couple, Mr. Chair. Uh, what's the width of the street from your building to the buildings <coughs> on the opposite side? I don't know the answer to that question offhand. I think it might be 33 feet, but I know that the issue that Mary Joy made clear was critical was the distance from our 10 foot deck to the next immovable object, which are the trees. And that was a field dimension by somebody from the city and the client, and it was less than the 16 feet, that, or 15 feet, which is required. 16, 16, right. It was, I forget what the number is, but we are aware of the, uh, it, it, it is the more than the minimum distance required for fire lane. I didn't really answer your question, did I? More or less. I don't know the answer, <coughs> real answer to question. Mm -hmm. I can find it out. The trees are about like five feet, yeah. six feet. I think, it's a I think it's 33 feet, but don't quote me on it. Does it 
would the 16 feet interfere with the cat hose using having their outside displays? No. no. Thank you. So where is the stucco paneling proposed? That's the sign panel, the replacement of the existing sign panel. And that goes? Yes. Mm -hmm. This whole portion right here? Correct. Right. Correct. That which is not existing brick. Is it all white? It's all the white stuff? The it is the white stuff. stuff. And it's quite smooth because you've already approved this administratively, but the signage is going to be painted on FYI. So we chose a very smooth stucco so that the resolution of the letters will be. Is um, just a couple things. Is are you going to have any lighting out on these? Yes, Check that things? was submitted as well as part of this. I'm pretty sure that was submitted as part of the sign the lighting. Deck. Oh, I'm sorry. On the yeah, decking. Yeah, on the decking. No, there are two big city um, lights in the area. Right. Is is the northernmost deck area in conflict with one of those? No, it's with moved out of the way specifically to avoid it. It's, um, is it? It, I think it's shown on the drawing. It's a little hard to see. Uh, you know, I think you might be right. Let me take that on advisement. I think it didn't get drawn on this drawing. You were aware of it. The, the northern one is just north of the northern side of the big slider opening. The northern light fixture here, if I look so here, yeah. is just right here. And I know that because we actually moved the slider opening slightly to avoid being in front of it. So <coughs> our drawing, I apologize, does not show that and it would be buried in the plant. But it doesn't change the scheme. So some of it will be under a cone of light Correct. and other, uh, others of it would not. That's, that's correct. Okay. I mean, some of the light is going to be coming from the um, inside. You know, portion of your scheme is going to envelop a public piece of public utility, the, the light post? Well, I think we that's need to sit. look into that a little more carefully. I think so. It's, uh, we'll make sure that I, we're not going to build it around it. It has the thing has to be removable. So right. we're going to have to make a little planter on one side or a little planter on the other side or more likely no planter at that particular point. <coughs> okay. I apologize for that oversight. And it, just a small thing, but in the black tile is mm -hmm. um, is the is, what's the color of the grout? It would be gray and unless gray. you have a problem mm -hmm. with it. I think for outside, lighter. I prefer gray than the, you know, same color grout, which is a little bathroomy, I think. Don't you agree? I think going with something gray makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I also yeah. think you want something with some traction. Yeah. Some sand. Is that a, a change of material? Is there a previous material approved there? Or is that the first material that's been proposed? We originally said that it would be um, match the mall brick, mm -hmm. like way back in the first um, submission. And, as our and is that the tile that's inside the lobby? That's inside? just what I was going to say, that yeah. we do. We have it like on the side. When you come in the side door, there's going to be a little piece of that, and mm -hmm. it's going to reappear in the bathrooms and various t penny tiles mm -hmm. as a kind of an accent piece. Other questions? Uh, the, the brick water, mm -hmm. um, is that... The cleaning, you mean? Yeah, the cleaning. Did you think about it? Did you consider like a, a hand cleaning instead of a power cleaning? Um, we didn't. Um, it was considered the inspiration, I'm afraid to say, but the inspiration was the Kaspari building. The client looked very much how that was, and that was left as it was. So, um, the answer is we considered and decided that power washing would be the best way to achieve some of the paint coming off, but not all of it, with the least damage to the underlying <coughs> brick. And I'm not sure what you mean by doing it by hand. You mean like chemicals in a brush? Oh, we did not. Instead of, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, blasting it. 
Okay. Answer is we didn't consider that, or at least I wasn't in on any conversation. I know that this is um, this was the decision. I got an email from Brian Hogg. I don't know if he sent that to everyone, but he suggested using um, water at a relatively low pressure below 500 PSI to remove loose material and accelerate the weathering. So he seems like he's okay with, with the water as long as it's very low pressure. The distinction well, there. You were still referencing high pressure, though. Yeah. Right. You want to do it as yeah. as least you possibly can to get your effect. So you ought to start with hand, then go to low pressure, then go to medium pressure. So right. And hand. I think that honestly, I think that the plan is to start with very low, you know, work on a little area, do it gradually, <coughs> so we can find the point where it is. It looks good to stop it, and right. then go from there. With the. Um, Steel thresholds that mm -hmm. lead onto the mm -hmm. to the three different terraces. Mm -hmm. Well, first let me ask because I'm making the assumption. It looks like it. There is a a skirt or an enclosure that turns down so mm -hmm. that the front face, as the street slopes, is is enclosed on those wood terraces. Yeah, it's very. The maximum is about 12 inches. <clears throat> so that's solid. It's not. You don't yeah. see underneath. Is there the same? Is that the same case where the steel checker plate or where the steel threshold is? Is there a piece that turns down to enclose that? Um, I, I don't think so. I, honestly, I think by definition, the, with the difference in height, we're talking about the thickness of a piece <coughs> of cabinet taking up the thickness of a piece of decking to bring it down to the mall. In other words, the, the deck, the high point of the deck will be basically sitting on, on the mall, you know, to the limits of tapering it down, and then the, and so it's the, the well, high. it's going to be the deck plus a some type of, of furring deck. channel, right? So right, right. It's, it's that dimension plus, plus that whatever again. Whatever the thinnest of that will be. So it could be this much. So I guess what I'm saying is, when you have a two foot piece, is there a little? Um, the answer is not to my knowledge. I can, I mean, on the drawing, you can see that it's drawn so that that's really, um, really only the thickness of the deck at the level that it, uh, where it meets the, the mall. Right. And then, so I'm saying that the, the little ramp, such as it is, the threshold, this is really an ADA threshold, the whole depth of it is the thickness of that piece of cabinet. And I understand that you're saying is there going to be a little metal piece on the side? And uh, we hadn't planned to. We didn't think that it would be a problem to just. Since you're referencing the section. But the section shows that on top of something else and then the steel coming in. So it's not that thickness. Does it's it? that thickness plus, isn't it? Does mm -hmm. it? Does it? I'm sorry. I think. I, don't, oh, I mean, it's drawn it's very, very small. Very, very small. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's very, very small. Yeah, you know, it's it's whatever you can make it without it falling apart, right? Right. <laughs> so, but I guess I'm asking, if, if he starts to approach that plus mm -hmm. another piece, a member underneath mm -hmm. that supports it and gives you a nailing surface, mm -hmm. and you start to arrive at something that's closer to two inches, right? you know, it works as an ADA threshold in one direction. Mm -hmm. It creates a little, no, it probably creates a little questionable tripping spot in the other direction, but... The, the bigger question is from a visibility standpoint, when everything else is enclosed, does that get its own little steel wedge? Yeah, and, you're and, talking and, about this, like this. Um, yeah. Um, we, we hadn't drawn it that way, and I, I can bring it to our design build guys and, you know, our, our builders and see if they feel that they can detail that. It's a little... It seems to me it's just a little... Thing. Okay. Piece on the side. But anyways. So, so the, the answer whole is thing no. had a solid steel. That would be nice, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the answer is no. Not the answer was we hadn't planned it. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? The fake step that you're using, you're also running it along here? No. Just mm -hmm. up here. That's just, just where the sign <coughs> panels are. Yeah. Which are being replaced. I mean, as we speak, I think they're, you know. And this is? That's just existing brick, and that's going to be painted. That's painted, all existing brick. Painted white? Mm, paint, oh, it's all painted the same color, actually. That's the color of the brick paint as well as the stucco. 
the purpose of bringing this, we already gotten the color approved in previous applications. The purpose was to show you the texture of the brick, which we hadn't, the texture, texture of, the of the stucco. stucco. Sorry, which so we hadn't. So you haven't thought about using real stucco? It, no. I mean, this is stow, which is, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? You know, fabricated. Mm -hmm. In the application, you had indicated that the, uh, the decking would be built in sections. Mm -hmm. How are these sections held together when it's in place? There's a good question. Um, they're, they're kind of, um, they're going to be uh, dovetailed, I guess you could say, or tongue and grooved a little bit, where the, the structure from one um, will project out and the structure for the other will be set back so that it'll be a little connection that will nonetheless allow them to be to, to you know be knitted together and then taken apart easily. This is not really a well this is a comment. I'll stop. Other questions? Uh, the stanchions are they fixed in any way or are they uh, loosely set onto this? I think purpose? they're loosely set on the thing. Okay. And it would appear to me that the bottom, the southernmost platform has a Eight and a quarter inch step that is larger than is allowed by code. Is that an issue for anybody? Building inspector have seen that? Issue for me. Um, okay, we'll look at that. Uh, some of these are field dimensions too, you know, depending right. upon. But uh, I, I'd say that if it's more than allowed by code, we'll make two steps. Okay. <clears throat> or we'll start it a little farther back, most likely. I'd, I'd be happier with starting a little back. It's a question of fitting in a certain number of. Chairs, as I'm sure you know. Any other questions? I just had a quick question. Is the, is the fake stucco approved, previously approved? I, I know I missed the, the, the meeting oh, where sure. it was the, the final review of this application. Wasn't it just the color that we had approved? Uh, we called it stucco. We didn't say that it was stow. Um, we didn't say that it was stow. I mean, so we didn't submit this. That's the first time that's been presented. That's correct. correct. Yeah. yeah. And that's why this was submitted to us by the builders. I can say because I've been on the other side of this table <laughs> that I believe Stowe has been approved on other projects by the BAR. But those may be new construction. Right. I was thinking because it was historic. It should be. But I mean, uh, yeah. I'm not sure if the thing that it's replacing was stucco. No, it wasn't. Yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, it was, was yeah, crummy. Terrible. terrible. Exactly. Terrible but I mean, it's a sign panel rather than the, the, or it's conceived of as a sign panel rather than an integral part of the building. And it was always a, um, uh, how do I say, you know, a curtain wall and applied, uh, applied uh, sheet of material. And it certainly wasn't part of the original building, yeah. for what it's worth. So we're going to get to comments. Let's, any other questions? Mary Joy, you? Oh, it was, it was just called stucco. It was called stucco, I can't So it wasn't mind. clarified, yeah. Okay, any other questions? Okay, comments from the public? Comments from the board? You know, Comments from the board? <laughs> I, I, I don't have any problem with um, the um, changes to the, to the canopy and, and I think the, the planters and the, the additional seating on the side of the building is, is well designed and meets the guidelines. Um, the stucco, I think, is a fake stucco. I think it's, it's a bit of an issue. I mean, I realize it's a side panel, but um, uh, it's actually a building element. Um, it comprises a large portion of the facade, and I think it probably has been approved in the past. I'm sure it has. I've approved it in other projects that I've reviewed as staff, but usually in minimal amounts um, and not on historic buildings and on buildings that are much farther usually from view. Um, I just don't think that fake stucco is an appropriate building, um, building material on a historic building. And I 
had fake stucco been approved, anything such as EFIS or anything like that, I probably would have had that comment earlier, but just assuming that it was soft stucco, and then I assumed that the board approved it previously, which is why I almost didn't say anything, but I just, I don't think stucco is appropriate building material, and I don't think it meets the guidelines, but other than that, all the changes you're proposing regarding it. What, are, what is the substrate for this application of stove? I'm sorry, I'm not better informed. Um, but stow is it, distinct from EFIS. I mean, it's a different. It's a uh, different. I think it, they've got four or five systems. Well, it I would, can be uh, EFIS. It answer, can be something yeah. more solid. It, it's right now the substrate is plywood. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's. I believe it's not. I'm sorry, I'm not better informed about the method. Um, this was submitted to us from Cameron Thomas. Sure. You know. Um, I mean, is stucco difficult to install? Well, the biggest issue is stucco would have a dimension to it now that might be difficult in the design where you might be able to have more control over your dimension on this. You know, I, I, I appreciate your concern. In, in reality, I mean, I think these projects are, um, products are pretty sophisticated and their application systems can be, you know, pretty fine. I, I wouldn't want to see a, you know, a a styrofoam system up there, but I think what they're proposing is probably a, you know, a fiberglass mesh or something applied directly to that with a scratch coat on it, and then you know another coat, and finally a finished coat on this. I mean, well, they can probably. Wanna, excuse me. We want to know for sure. Yeah, I, I think that would be my biggest comment today is for where we're at right now. We yeah. probably really need to know exactly what you're proposing. Yeah, because definitely a styrofoam system. I think not. Yeah, I think styrofoam would be problematic for a majority. But I would also uh, and. I agree, but I, I would be surprised if Cameron Thomas was, was doing that. And I suspect that what we are going to find is that it's acceptable. But I know. could see <laughs> having that information brought back to staff and staff I will do distribute. That. I will do that. And, and I would say we could <clears throat> proceed today with that as something that's put on hold until yeah. we get more information. And I'm going to say that this was submitted as the finish. Yeah. This was submitted to us from Cameron Thomas for the finish. And so that, that doesn't really necessarily mean that's what he's doing. I, I, that's why I'm saying I'm yeah. not as well informed as I should be, and okay. I apologize. And I'll, I will come back. I will confirm that and come back uh, to you with the clear intention of what it's. Because going. if that's the third coat in a three coat process, that's not a problem. Yeah, that's this is it's the undercoat, and this is the yeah. final coat. I think it's actually a two-coat process. Two That's coat? what I was told, that this was mm. the undercoat and this was the finish coat. Okay. Other comments? Oh, well, I read that like it was going to be textured, like that's presented. I think it is. That is the... Like, to make it look old, that's what I have a problem with. That it, Th this. It's going to be this. Right, but that little corner... No, that's, no, no, that's, that's the that's undercoat. That's just showing you what's beneath it, I okay. think. That's oh. the undercoat. I think the entire finish would be what's the majority of that sample. Okay. That I did check. It's my experience in working no, with No, that samples. I confirmed. This yeah. is the undercoat, this is the finish coat. Okay, so they're not going to try to have it look more. No, 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 like no, 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 no. I mean, on the contrary, because we're doing this painted sign, we really want it to be. I was very. No, I understand clear that, that where the lettering is going to be smooth, but I no, thought no, that no. was a way of showing like it was old stucco no. or something. Mm -hmm. There will be no faux fatiguing no of the stucco. <laughs> <laughs> distressing. Distressing. It's distressing, the distressing. Um, other comments? Um, I, I support the project. I guess I have two issues. One is the brick cleaning to make sure that some of that brick might just be sand, almost just sand. Mm -hmm. So it could be very fragile if you hit it with power wash. Mm -hmm. Take out the mortar and mm -hmm. the brick and mm -hmm. all that. So go very slow. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the effect could be nice if it turns out, as in the renderings. <laughs> <laughs> if um, and then the other issue is just with the um, with the city light mm -hmm. in in conflict with the northernmost um, pad. And there's another thing about the the, the cabiny um, decks that come out. I think it would be stronger, and this is just a friendly suggestion, if that material change uh, coincided with the openings 
if you know what I mean. I do. So if you did have to get rid of the northernmost um, yeah. ebony deck and you Definitely. increase the other deck by some mm. dimension so that the ebony surface aligned with the opening, I think that would be stronger for the project and a little, just a little less disjointed mm -hmm. when you look at it on the side, um, you know, on that side elevation. Can I respond to that? I forget what the procedure is. It's, 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 not a, that condition? it's not a condition. It's not no, a condition. Don't, then don't now I won't bother. Okay. So it was finished comments, but those are. Uh, I very strongly feel like that. Uh, Bill's last issue is a, is a big issue for me, and, and I was interested to hear about the light because that kind of prompts more reconsideration of this thing. But, yeah, the whole relationship of the three pieces, the idea that they're each a different size is kind of problematic for me. You know, that the, the point where I commented on the, the step down that's illegally high, you know, I think three similar pieces that each had essentially the same step, the same entry, <coughs> you know, would be strong if there was some, if this building was dictating the three different sizes in some way from the, you know, the openings to the um, solid panels, I would understand that. But to not be more responsive to the context of the building behind it, you know, I really wonder about these three different sizes. So I, I would love that to be reconsidered. I, I really potentially like the way the um, the wood and the the steel threshold work together, I think it very much needs to read as a solid chunk of steel. So I think um, Fred's point about uh, covering that end panel would be uh, pretty important to me. Um, I think the stanchions. I think it's this thing is so tightly designed. You know those stanchions work when you're out there on a big brick mall and it can move six inches either direction. But you've got these seats laid out so tight that those things are going to be falling off the edge of that with some regularity. I, I think you're building this whole system. I would fix them in some way. I mean, it's just a matter of, you know, some some little receiver there. So you got to pick them up two inches and slide it before it falls off. Mm. So I think that would be a, a, a good idea. But overwhelmingly, I would look for some regularity that allowed the the system. You know, I think I think it could be three, but I would wonder why the three weren't virtually identical. Could be one larger one for my money. Although I think a couple of them are probably nice. They get um, one large one gets. Oh, high is what happens off the ground. Yeah, I understand it, but you got one of them's got two steps, one of them's one of them's got a legal a legal one step, one of them's got an illegal one step, and one of them's got two steps. So I, I would just look for some uniformity there. Um, then I, you know, I guess the little tiles at the entry are, I, you know, I don't know if that was in our package or not. I didn't understand that until tonight. I, you know, God, I'd really love to know how many times, you know, I love as a designer, I'd love to see that kind of mall you know, go from the exterior space up to the threshold. You know, it's not the end of the world that it would come out. I'd love to know how many of those conditions we do have, you know, the interior material coming out and appearing outside. I, I would really like to see that something that was more compatible with the brick mall. You know, that transition right at the edge of your property line from mall brick to glazed ceramic tile is a little, little harsh for me. Is that something I could respond to? No, uh, it's yeah. past that time. <clears throat> let's let's go through everybody and then see if there's anything that needs needs that first. Are there other comments? Let me one more comment mm -hmm. about the, the, the paint removal process. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, at least a portion of that sidewall was painted mm -hmm. to serve as a screen for festival of the mm -hmm. photograph, and it could be they used a different type of paint so it would be mm -hmm. more reflective, which mm -hmm. may be more difficult to remove mm -hmm. than the water-based mm -hmm. or whatever's on there. Mm -hmm. So perhaps it, they should be aware of that when they start the process. Okay. I um I actually, I kind of like the idea of the tile coming out at the entry. I feel like there's a precedent for that that you see a lot in thresholds. Perhaps it's more in cases where you have storefront on either side that projects and it's an enclosed or contained space. But, um, but though I think Mike makes a good point about how that detail resolves itself when it hits the brick. And is there some type of transitional piece 
that helps you move from something with a square rectilinear edge to <coughs> what, what we I've experienced before with penny tile, which is the sort of scalloped edge when you try to run those two things up against something else. Um, in general, I like the um, the whole approach to the to the decks. I feel strongly also that the steel threshold should be consistent with the side treatment of the wood so that it's consistently solid. Uh, and I like the suggestion that those stanchions would become part of your design instead of something that looked like it was moved from the brick right up onto the, and I think it would have a smaller footprint which would help you guys negotiate table and chair seating better anyways. But mm -hmm. um, And I appreciate the description of the results of the window head heights and the, the alignment, so thank you very much. And I think you're right, I don't think it's really gonna be overly perceivable when it's all said and done. Um, I do think there's a, a strong sort of argument for a notion that these pieces that are projecting out actually have a response. I mean, because this building is so transparent mm -hmm. and because you've made such sort of dramatic, dynamic openings in the wall, having these uh, eating decks or surfaces related to the window openings as opposed to the third one, which clearly looks like it's going to present a problem anyways with the city light. Um, I think I would be in favor of having at least the wood portion, maybe not the steel threshold, but the wood portion tied to the opening and combining those, the first two into one that has to do with that big opening somehow, uh, even if it meant a different approach to the steps down at the end because it pushes it up a little bit higher. Um, you know, I, I very much like the design of the scheme and the approach, but I think that I think that that's a, a valid point that's been raised in terms of the kind of uh, relationship between the sort of outside parts and the inside parts. And we spent a lot of time talking about the facade and the building, and all of a sudden when we get to the site elements, to just sort of change the channel a little bit. I mean, I think it's designed in a way that appears to be consistent, but from uh, a relationship standpoint, I think that those are, are valid concerns raised by Mr. Osteen and Mr. Adams. So, I mean, I, I feel like I could support this, but we would probably want to make some conditions with respect to the relationship of the deck to the opening, which might suggest that these things would still want to come back to us. Yeah. So I'm wondering if, knowing that this is generally, I think, has support amongst the board, if this is something is you want to defer and then come back um, with the revised. Uh, when's your next meeting? When? I mean, I, my sense yes. is these changes are small. I, I can definitely. Um, address that and I don't know whether it's something if we come back and meet it we can handle it administratively or let me let me tell you but the answer is we'll re definitely respond to that I actually agree okay um, well in that case and I don't know if there's any other comments do you want to do you want to defer or do you want us well, we prove everything except the day uh, we yes yes there's a fair amount here that I think could be approved so they could move yeah. on yeah so does somebody want to make a motion excluding the, the, the deck is the one thing to come back and, and Do we need any information back on the stucco? Well the stucco is I think the other thing that we're gonna is gonna be on hold until we get just some more information about the the application technique and what the substrate is. Yeah. Whether or not that's simply mm -hmm. indicative of the finish or if that's the actual yeah. product. Can I ask a question? If, if, if we were simply to meet that recommendation straight on, just do what you asked, could we submit it to be approved if it's, if it's redrawn as meeting your suggestion so we don't have to come back to next month? So because procedurally? I, because I'm very comfortable with the details and the way this is drawn, I would be comfortable with Mary Joy understanding our intention and therefore, you know, seeing this as something that could be administratively approved because it's already been in front of the board and through a discussion once. This is the issue of alignment I'm talking about. Yeah. I really. Right. I mean, provided nothing else changes materially. Um, 
I would be comfortable with that. It could be circulated to the board. Could yeah, be circulated. Yeah. 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 Just I think they're going to be want to be building it that day. So Were you? I'm sorry. I, I missed. Um, you you were talking about the um, the outdoor cafe, the, the portion the, coming back for administrative rather than full board review. That if that alignment was adjusted mm -hmm. and Mary Joy could have a drawing that could be circulated, and that if we all said yes, that meets the intention or the spirit of what we discussed. I just wanted to make sure I heard what was being so proposed. So is it a, alignment and stanchions and threshold? If they address those. Yeah. Those things, alignment of the wood with the openings. Uh, yeah, the, the only one I'm not sure about because it hasn't been discussed is the stanchions. I take your point very well. I know that movability was is an issue because it was an issue that the city came to us and made sure. So it has to be somehow that it can be moved. But yeah, we'll address, we'll figure it out. It's, I, it, you're right that it might get knocked over. It's just in there. I I mean, I, I think that's a, done, but I, mean, I think it can problem. too. But I think it's also that's more of a suggestion. I think yeah. that yeah. Okay. the other two items are, are concerns. I think yep. that that okay. that's fair. I'll try something. Okay. Having considered the standards set forth within the city code, <clears throat> including city design guidelines for rehabilitation, I move to find that the revisions to the original design for front canopy window head slash canopy heights and brick finish satisfies the BAR's criteria and are compatible with this property and other properties in this <coughs> district. The BAR approves those items as submitted. Um, further that the BAR requires that the design for the new outdoor cafe platforms be revised as revisited as uh, suggested discussed this evening and submitted for administrative approval <coughs> uh, and the let's see one further condition on the um, brick finish that the uh, applicant um, use the least intrusive um, manner of, of uh, finishing possible. Did you mention there that the stucco, that the stucco application would be clarified? Oh yes, that the, uh, yeah, the stucco application and the, um, the backing uh, be, be clarified. As, as discussed. Yeah. As dis Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Yeah, one comment, Mr. Chair. The, uh, I'd like for the record to reflect that they have agreed to remove it at the end of the cafe season this year. Uh, rather than it just being a promise, it should be a requirement. And I think city code, the, the cafe stuff deals with it, but sometimes those things get overlooked. Uh, I mean, they, 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 they just, they've agreed to do it. Yeah. But I think we just should be in the record that they have agreed to do it. Okay. Okay. Do you want to accept that as an amendment to the motion? That's fine. Second's fine. Okay. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Come and have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Our next item on the agenda is 500 Court Square. Uh, this is for the replacement of nine windows in a <clears throat> Court Square condo. Enjoy. On the sixth floor facing Market Street. Right nine existing wood windows so it's the rear elevation of the former monticello hotel um, the applicant wants to replace the windows with aluminum clad wood window sash kits <coughs> they'll have uh, exterior applied seven eighths inch putty profile muntins and um, they're proposing a cream color that's intended to match the other ex the existing windows in the building and i had a lot of conversations with the 
applicant's representative, uh, that's Sam, Sammy Beverly. And um, they were actually going to have a homeowners association meeting last night to talk about this, among other things, I guess. Um, the problem of replacing windows in a condominium building with many different owners has come up before. Um, the applicant in this case is proposing an appropriate type of window replacement. The applicant said there have been many window replacements in the former Monticello, Ho Monticello Hotel building, some with simulated divided lights with grids between the glass. And you can see those as you walk around the building. Apparently these were done without VAR approval. Um, the applicant will meet with the homeowners association and to get their thoughts on future window replacements. <coughs> so he can tell us what happened last night. Um, I did request information comparing the dimensions of the existing and replacement windows. The applicant said because this is a sash kit, the dimensions will be very similar. And the applicant has said he will try to bring a color sample and try to get an actual window sample for this meeting. So um, I don't have any other comments. I think what he's proposing is appropriate, and um, I think that he's here so he can answer any other questions you have. The applicant care to add anything to Mary Joy's summary? Uh, well, I have some samples to show you what the window will look like. Mr. Chair, I need to disclose that I'm a friend of the applicant and had visited the condo, and the applicant was prepared to replace the windows without seeking approval because the Homeowners Association told him that there was an approved window, and he was not aware of the regulation. So... It, it, it went the correct way. Okay. This is the cutaway of the window we're going to use. This is a, a sample of the actual sash. It's aluminum clad on the outside. Wood on the interior it can be the primed or stained. Um, as you can see, it simulates the buttons in the window. Um, this is the color of the trim of the window now. And then we have a color chart from the window manufacturer. Very much. Which color are you? I think there's one that's an ivory color that's very similar to it. Ivory or air <laughs> It's like the third one down is about the closest one. Second or third. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. One of those two. <laughs> there is no exact match. No. Although two, two seems more yellow, but it seems closer. Flip it over, see what's on the other side. There's some... French vanilla. <laughs> it's making me hungry. <laughs> or thirsty. Or thirsty. Um, the windows in the past have been done with ones that didn't have the simulated light, uh, divided light on the outside. The ones we're proposing will have it on the outside to make it more appealing and to make it look more like the original. Um, dimensions are pretty much the same for glass dimensions because all the side rails and so forth are pretty much similar. Is is seven eighths the smallest um, mutton bar? That's what matches what's there now. That is what matches. Yes. Sir. Okay. So is the is the whole window unit coming out, and it'll get re, there'll be a new casing on the outside. What happens is the interior trim is removed, the old sashes are pulled out, the new sashes are put in against the exterior trim, and then the interior trim is put back on. And there's a, a jam liner that's going to be yes. some dimension. Okay. Right. Yes, but yes. it's very thin. So you won't have that jam that you're, you've got there. You won't have that. This is the mock-up of the window when it's cut away, so you can see the dimensions of everything. We're getting a little bit out of out of order here. If we're, oh, let me. Any questions from the public? Okay. Sorry. So you you won't have that full frame. Assembly. You won't have a whole new frame around the window. No, sir. Like, okay. No, sir. It's a, this is a sash kit. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the exterior trim will stay intact. Interior trim is removed. The dividers between the existing sashes are pulled out. A, sa a trim kit is put in to the sash channel, and it needs to put it back in against the exterior trim. And that way, the dimension of the glass is basically the same. And the ones that are there now don't have the exterior mutton, so. It's just flat glass on the outside and the inside. So is there an approved window? Yeah, that was my question. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if that's your question, but do you know if there's any truth to that 
I don't concept know. that there's an approved window in the if it kind is, of it, it hasn't been used uh -huh. <laughs> because it's as Mary George indicated it's a number of windows and at least one of the officers of the homeowners association felt as long as they were six over six it was fine regardless of what the material was mm -hmm. so it's a lot of lack of understanding mm -hmm. or confusion but perhaps after tonight it will be clear to to the building i couldn't find any files on changing windows i found one on adding two new windows that was done i think in 03 when i first got here and there's been other applications but none for changing windows mm -hmm. so um, yeah. i think if they thought they had an approved window maybe the homeowners thought they approved it that's very possible. The gentleman yeah. who used to take care of the building passed away a couple of years ago, so I have no way of answering that. So now we know. Okay, we will know. We will know now. <laughs> because we don't have the uniform over time <laughs> and interior grills. Uh, they had a meeting last night and discussed the windows. At this time, they're not going to um, commit to any one window because they've got some other things they're pursuing, or possibly taking out the entire jams and everything because of lid issues. Um, I've, the other question I was going to ask tonight that's not on the application, um, I would be curious to see if we could wrap the exterior with aluminum that would be the color of the window to avoid lead issues. Mm. I didn't think so, but I thought I'd ask while I was here. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard to tell what the profile of the brick mold it. is. It's a brick mold, isn't it? Yeah. Somewhat. But it's got so many layers of paint on it, it almost doesn't have a profile anyway. The issue that's going to come up is lead, obviously, because of, you know the building was built in the 20s. Um, like every other aging building, we have um, distressed paint issues, and their answer is going to be to try to remove the entire thing and put all new in. And I told them I don't think the board would go for that. But that's that's their battle to fight. I'm fighting this one tonight. <laughs> so, the the building is is entirely. Uh, Entirely condominiums. From the fourth floor to the tenth floor is condos. And then below it is commercial. Third and yes. Okay. <coughs> but um, it's all under one ownership, or is that are those condominium Uh Individuals own their own condos. Yeah, but on, on the bottom floors as well, are those commercial condos, or is uh, it yeah. all one ownership for the bottom four floors, and then? No, they're owned individually by different sections. Okay. I mean, this is this is well. We don't. We can get to comments in a second. Other questions? I had one last question. It's on the south elevation. It's the sixth floor. Which side of the south elevation is it? How many? How many windows are you taking? All nine out? of them on the uh, Market Street side of the building. Oh, you're going to do all nine on yes, the sir. sixth floor south elevation. Yes, it's not the entire sixth floor. It's just two units. Two units. Yeah, it's two okay. condos that are connected. But it's the whole south elevation. Is it the whole south elevation? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no. <coughs> one, one, two windows on the end of the building that belong to another unit. On the south elevation? Correct. Okay. On the Does that end. person want to change their windows as well? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's actually looking into some other things for her. She's the one that brought it up at the board last night about the lead paint issues. Mm -hmm. And that's how they got the discussion of taking the entire jams and everything out, which I told me I had no idea what that would cost if it gets approved, which I didn't think it would. But again, that's their battle. And, and the reasoning behind changing the windows, I, They're just I, falling I, know, apart. I know the answer. By the time you try to, to repair them, you're going to have so much money involved in lead issues and uh, sash replacement. All the weight, Most of the ropes are broke on the weights. Um, so by the time you get into destroying it to try to fix it, um, you're going to have probably as much, if not more, vested because of the lead paint issues. We, we review a lot of 1920s buildings. Um, I, I don't hear lead coming up a lot. Is, is that common? It it's came up a lot. It's, it's lead just got more complicated in the last couple months, too. Yeah. Um, you know, the regulations changed, but it's it's in everything before. Particularly for children anywhere within a thousand miles. But does repair is it repair cause lead issues and problems? 
Just breaking up the paint and you know, sh shaking some of it loose, sure. So you just clear it out. The homeowner's not home. Deal with it, clean it up, and then it's kind of okay. But, yeah, it's not like asbestos. Yeah. You have to clear the entire building. Just yeah, I, I don't think so, but I don't really know. The, the regulations did just change within the last three Much months. It got a lot tougher. Okay. okay. What are we, comments? Questions? We'll move to comments. Any comments from the public? Comments from the board? Uh, he indicated that the condo board was not willing to commit to a, quote, standard window. Do we need approval of the condo board to approve a window? Or is it just the applicant himself? Well, I think we should approve one window. And that the, that either the condo association gets together to provide a proposal of what they would want to support because I think we need to be consistent. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, it's like a comprehensive sign package yeah. or something. You know, some, some condos we look at, they have so many different facets mm -hmm. and so many different directions and they're broken up and you could, you know, logically go at it unit by unit. but. I think the nature of this building, the height of this building, the prominence of all the facades, the otherwise totally uniformity in each of those facades, I think there needs to be, you know, it could potentially be a couple windows that are acceptable, but we need to see all those three windows. We need to approve them at the same time. We need to know. So, I mean, I think it's something that the condo board needs to come in here with a plan for replacing all of them or replacing them one at a time incrementally, and this is their window of choice for the next two years, and they'll entertain proposals down the road and come back to us if that's what it takes. But And that could help them in the future, too, because then at one or two windows that are approved, mm -hmm. it can be administratively reviewed, and you don't mm -hmm. have to come yeah, before the exactly. board, and they could just come with an application and say, we're using the windows that have been previously approved by the BARX. If they want to ever come revisit to add a new window selection or change, because a window changes or technology changes with windows all the time, mm -hmm. they can come forward in the future. But you know, and I'm I, I'm the window nut here on the board, so <coughs> I'm my nut first. In general. <laughs> my first uh, question is always: Is the de does the deterioration warrant replacement? Because mm -hmm. this is such a prominent and such an important mm -hmm. building. Um, I mean, obviously, I think there's clearly damage here, but you know, replacement I think is going. You know, it's obviously happened already at this building. You know, mm -hmm. on this building, it's such a huge building that obviously I think we're going to have to realistically just think that windows are going to be replaced here over time, but I do think they have to be consistent when we have to have a proposal. Either what we say here tonight, mm -hmm. which is what, if you're comfortable with that, I'm comfortable with that, but as long as the condo association knows that what's approved here tonight will become will our become default. But that, that was, no, yeah, one's answered not my, real comfortable with that. no one's answered my question. Do we need approval from the condo board? to approve a window for a single unit. I can't we don't, imagine we don't need yeah, approval yeah. to yeah. give yeah. approval. We don't need any stinking approval. <laughs> <laughs> what we're getting at is if this one does approve, mm -hmm. the, the person who hopes to replace two windows will not have a choice. Okay. They, will, they will have to use the window that's approved. And but in terms of our giving approval or not to this application, I mean, that's totally separate from whatever the applicant's responsibilities are with his or her condo board. Right. Right. And, and I th think it's in the same way that we review projects that sometimes sort of hypothetically exist on pieces, parcels of land that people don't own yet. We can give approval for that. doesn't mean they can go build it. Right. Um, so in this case, I think it's more about is the window appropriate, the replacement appropriate, and I think that the, the fact is, and I, I, there is a question as to whether or not we want to be, without the board understanding it, basically deciding for them what the acceptable window is. And it does seem there's a certain logic in having the board, just because of the challenges of having a building where you have so many tenants and yet you have a unified building envelope that mm -hmm. should be treated as one thing, not as 27 different things. Um, having the board come with a unified voice and saying, here's the window we want to use, or here are the windows, and from now on, as windows get replaced, this is what our, you know, what the owners will be obliged to use based on our bylaws and guidelines that happen within the building ownership. And, and I do think that 
despite certain windows having been replaced without any approval being given and certainly not being windows that would have been approved, I don't think it means that we just sort of let the building envelope no, go down no. <laughs> because death by a thousand pinpricks. So we still need to hold the same sort of um, guidelines in terms of what, what's acceptable and what should be approved. So the real question is, do we approve this and leave it to the board to either come back? I mean, we could approve this and then the board, with the, with the acknowledgement that if the board accepts this, then that's one of their windows. They can choose to come back or tell the applicant, well, then wait a minute, we want to look at this differently. It will still give the applicant the ability, if the board accepts it, to move forward. Um, Do you feel comfortable? I mean, I'm comfortable with, with Jeldwin well, as a window. Do you feel comfortable with if we approve this tonight? Are, are you the building? You're the. Well, they give me this long title that basically means maintenance man, but okay. uh, physical plant <laughs> coordinator is what they call it. Are you comfortable with telling them that after tonight, if we approve this? Um, oh, I, no, I told them that from the get go because okay. this is a better quality window than what they've been putting in. Right. And appearance wise, it looks a whole lot better. Yeah. So, so are you okay with oh, yeah, this? With what, if we approve this tonight, that this is the as of this point, this is the only window that it came. Well, place. the only thing that will happen is if they don't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, they had it, they looked at all this last night at the board meeting, mm -hmm. and I talked to two different board members. They one of them president, one of them just a member, used to be president, and there isn't. Um, both of them like the window, but they won't commit to it because their uh, RPI, real property investment, is involved within that. And they've got them looking toward pulling out the entire windows, frame trim and all, and putting a whole new system in. Um, my first comment to them was, "Good luck getting it approved." But um, you know, it, I'm the little pond moving around the chessboard. Um, to me, this is a lot better quality window than what's been put in there, because the others were traditional vinyl windows with a vinyl trap around the side, and you just you know, that's what you see. So if, if, if real property ends up convincing them from a building management standpoint, a holistic standpoint, to replace all the windows, would that include things like this that might go in now and two years from now could be changed out as part, well, yeah, of, as part of a wholesale swap? You and, and want to swap the entire system out. It's very possible. And then that just, well, it's none of our business, but that gets loaded on all the owners and shared as a sort of common expense? That's the way they were talking and then talking about the building, giving something back to the owners if they choose to do it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't at the meeting. I don't go to the board meetings. Um, I avoid those. <laughs> well, because, I mean, certainly if there was another window that came forward, I mean, the only way it would work is if there was consistency. And consistency could either be approving a different window and saying, but you also need to go back and change the previous six that we've approved so that they all match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could, or there's a building-wide solution. If this window is acceptable, could we approve it subject to approval by the, the owner's association? There, I don't think our approval is predicated on the owner's association's approval. I think well, we, we could make it a condition, no. could we not, so that it could... If we approve that, it, that approved. maybe tomorrow they have a special meeting and says, "Yeah, it's we'll go with that for the whole building." I mean, you know, if I'm we just, approve it tonight and they don't approve it, they're kind of tough out on this. Yeah, yeah I just want to make it work the best way. And what about the other windows that have already been put in? Can we go back and make no. them change them? I think the challenge there is that you know, if it was, I don't know how you prove that it was done by the people that currently own the unit. Can you put that on somebody who owns the unit and bought something that has windows that were shouldn't have been replaced with the windows they have now? Or, I mean, there's some, I there's some either cases. way, though, it seems like they should That's pass. the challenge with multiple ownership of a property, <laughs> I think, as opposed to having one person that you can point to and say you're responsible for this, which I think is something we need to think about how, not tonight, but how the BAR can regulate this. Mm -hmm. Um, when you have multiple parties with divergent uh, goals or agendas, but you're trying to make something, you're trying to keep a holistic view in terms of the appearance. I think that's a challenge for us. And then given that there's already been inappropriate replacements in the past, I think for me that's more of an incentive to be a little bit more restrictive and a little have a little bit harder line on it. Oh, I agree. I agree. So, so I, 
I think this window unit is appropriate. Mm -hmm. If it gets approved tonight, <coughs> it's the only thing that can be used at this point that I see. Unless they readdress the issue. Unless they come back with okay. a full application to talk about a total replacement or they request an additional window to be considered. Yeah, I mean, if somebody came back and said, here's another window, and you put these two side by side, and we say we can't tell the difference, and it's comparable and just happens to have a different manufacturer and name, then I don't yeah. see it's not. But that, that's a process that would have to be gone through. Yeah. And you're in agreement on Is, the color? Just by chance. French vanilla. French vanilla. <laughs> okay. Just um, wanted to make sure. But are there, I heard a little bit of concern back here about moving forward with this. Uh, I'm no, not I didn't sure. Understand. I didn't understand you were a, a, a representative of the owner. I, I was assuming you were a private contractor that was doing this. And, and first changed my thought thinking in one direction and then kind of in another direction. But I, I still think it'd be, you know, in, in everybody's best interest for the condo association to come to us with a proposal. You know, this we're looking at one owner's selection is kind of, you know, channeling that entire thing and they're probably responding to a certain set of concerns. I, I would appreciate a, a comprehensive look at all of the issues and find the best, hopefully one window or maybe maybe two windows that, you know, addressed all of those problems. But, you know, I recognize it can be tough to get a board like that moving all in the same direction. So if one owner is inclined to make this happen, that's fine. But I would say that it ought to be stipulated that this is the one window that's approved at this point and no others are. Yeah, I, I don't think, I think because it's the first one we're approving, I, I don't think we can sort of hold the one applicant hostage while we try to, It'd be hard to try to sort of force the right. board to, to do something that they obviously had a chance to talk about a little bit, maybe not enough time last night, but. No, I, think but when you, I think the way you force them, you know, if you start denying individual owners, then you get a couple that want to do it, and then all of a sudden you get a groundswell of interest at the oh, that's, that's true, that's true. But I'm, but I'm comfortable with the idea of addressing this tonight. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please. Yeah. We're, Having considered the standards set forth within the city code, including city design guidelines for rehabilitation, I move to find that the proposed window replacement project satisfies the BAR's criteria and is compatible with this property and other properties in the district. The BAR approves the application as submitted with the understanding that the color is the French vanilla. Was that it? Correct. Yep. The French vanilla color and that this window um, replacement is the standard the, the only approved window replacement at this time for that entire structure do you want to get on the record the brand or window type or do you want to get well I think it's that's the since it's included in the application that's in there. Okay. yeah okay. In a second I'll second is there any discussion Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very, very much. much. Appreciate it. Good night. Thank you. The um, next item on the agenda is 423 Second Street Northeast. Uh, this is exterior restoration and uh, a removal of a chimney. <coughs> I need to disclose that I'm a neighbor, um, but don't feel like it's a conflict. And I need to recuse myself because I'm doing the interiors on the project. Thank you. Okay. Um, this is a Victorian-style residence built in 1913, a contributing structure in North Downtown ADC District. And the applicant proposes to renovate the exterior and remodel the interior the submittal describes the entire scope of work, but I've listed the items that require BAR approval. And those are remove the front chimney and replace that hole with a copper roof to match. Second is um, on the north side of the building, um, there was a, a stairway and a doorway added in the 1970s to serve an apartment on that level. So they want to um, replace the apartment door with a uh, double hung window, and then they want to remove that exterior stairway so it takes it back to closer to what it was before 
Um, the house currently has shutters on the front elevation and they want to add shutters on the first and second floors on the other three sides of the building. They want to add porch lights. They want to remove the Philadelphia gutter on the porch roof only and replace it with a half round six inch gutter painted white. Um, <coughs> under the uh, front porch, they want to add a new uh, concrete masonry unit retaining wall under the east and north sides of the front porch. And that would come to within six inches above the grade. And then they're going to replace the brick piers for the porch, which will sit on top of that new wall. And they intend to replace the front porch steps. <clears throat> and then site work, um, in order to do the drainage work in the front, they need to remove all the boxwoods and other plantings, and they intend to do the drainage work and then replace them. Uh, the front walkway, they want to put in a, a, cut a slot in it for drainage gravel. Um, and lastly, um, on the north side, they're adding a step down with like materials to get the grade below the window well. <coughs> So um, discussion and recommendations, the BAR must determine if the front chimney contributes to the style and character of the building. Uh, the new window proposed on the north side should match the existing, that is one over one wood. The shutters should match the existing style, should be hung and should be sized to fit the windows. The material should be wood or the BAR has approved composites in the past for shutters if they're thick enough to appear like wood. Um, any replacement work, such as the front, step, front steps, should match existing materials and design. And the BAR may wish to see more detail on the porch lighting, the proposed landscape plan, and so on. And that's all I have. Is the applicant present? And is there anything you want to add to Mary Joy? <laughs> Hi there. Great. Uh, we just want to restore the exterior. Mm -hmm. um, not changing any colors. Um, uh, the steps going back the same. Basically, just trying to make it back to a single family home rather than the multifamily. And uh, I think the rest was stated. Okay. The uh, Philadelphia gutter on the porch roof is literally a two by four. <coughs> Planted right on top, and it's such a low, profile, low slope roof that it's just becoming a pool of water that's kind of rotting out uh, the whole porch structure. Um, and we'd like to keep the copper roof and have the water drain out quicker. Quicker. So that was the idea of the half round gutter mm -hmm. elevation there. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions from the public? Questions from the board? I have one question. You uh, are considering using uh, half round gut on the front porch, mm -hmm. but paint it white. Have you considered just using pre-painted aluminum half round rather than galvanized as painted white? Yes, yes. You have considered that? Yes. And why did yeah. you go with this instead of the aluminum? No, we would, we would go with the aluminum. Sorry. Are you going to um, re-roof the, the front porch yes. completely? Yes. Okay. So the seams that run all the way down to the yes. end. And, right. Okay. <coughs> the, um, the front steps, when you say replace existing steps to match? Yeah, they'd be the wood, matching wood steps. Okay. Yeah, painted to match. And the um, plantings? When it's a, um, it says replace plantings, I'm assuming you're not going to try to save the existing plantings and put them back. You're going to replace with new plantings. My understanding is that boxwoods, when they're dug up in the summer, die. We're going to try to salvage them, but um, my okay. understanding is that they die. Say, so we'd probably we'd be putting in new ones. It depends on timing. Yeah. I mean, if you do it in the winter. Right. Yeah. Right. So, okay, so it's new. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> Are you going to have a new handrail for the front steps? Uh, you, you know what? I hadn't thought about that. We were just kind of matching what was there. 
it's a metal is it a pipe or a pipe rail? Yes, So, the purpose in removing the chimney is, is it about its impact on the interior? Is it about the condition of? It's both. Okay. It, primarily, I mean, the fireplaces do not work now. They're coal burning. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, there's only one on the first floor. The second floor has already been blocked up. And um, the, <coughs> the mortar uh, above the roof line is deteriorated and require a lot of work to get done. But a lot of it has to do with the interior too, opening up the first floor. It's the first time I think I've seen a drawing come to us that says man cave on it. <laughs> I mean, we all refer to the man cave when we're designing spaces. The, uh, the house next door to it, which was also built by the same builder I mean, within a, within a three-year period, three year period, has a ch central chimney, and but it's in the back. And so I included a picture of that. Um, okay. And the, from certain angles, that back chimney on our house also, you can also see it. Any other questions? Okay. Great. Are there any comments from the public? Comments from the board? I have one comment. It's not a design comment, but the fact that this was a multi-family home and this could be owner-occupied, and the neighborhood supports <laughs> pretty much everything. <laughs> That's not my comment, that's the neighbor's comment. So noted. I, um, I, I support the applications proposed. Um, I think it meets the guidelines. And in regards to the, to the specific guideline that, that guides us to retain elements such as chimneys that contribute to the style and character of the building, I don't think in this case this particular chimney, uh, chimney is a character defining feature uh, of the building as, say, different from the chimneys that were illegally torn down on the building in West May. I mean, this is an early 20th century building similar to the chimney removal we just approved on the VMBO building, uh, in former YMCA downtown. So I, I, in this particular case, support the chimney removal of the chimney and then all other aspects of the um, application and look forward to seeing it restored. That's great. Other comments? I would agree with all that. I think it's a, uh, you know, a nice, nice, um, you know, workmanlike solution. There's not any, you know, kind of heavy, heavy handedness design ideas imposing on it, going back with totally appropriate uh, solutions to problems. And, uh, yeah. You know, just a evolution of a nice old building. Yeah. I would and reiterate, I think that the, the distinction of the chimney not being connected with one of the primary elevations, but being sort of embedded in the building and therefore mm -hmm. simply coming through the roof at some point, I think takes a lot of pressure off of that going away uh, in my point in my opinion I also think it is consistent with another application which we just looked at which was very similar where the chimney was also allowed to be removed so I would support this I'd support it too it's a nice presentation yeah Thank you. so I, I would just add that if you do a front handrail mm -hmm. It wants to have some design. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and if it is designed, that that, yeah, that, that of course, would come back in front of <clears throat> the board, or at least to Mary Joy. So, yes. um, so unless people feel the need to say some more glowing things, I think we should. Uh, Having considered the standards set forth within the city code, including city design guidelines for demolition and rehabilitation, I move to find that the proposal. Uh, to remove the front chimney, porch gutter, and north door and stairway, add shutters, and do exterior repairs and site work satisfies the BAR's criteria and is compatible with this property and other properties in the district, and the BAR approves the application as submitted. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Congratulations. Good luck with it. Thank Good you very luck. much. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to... Um, well, City of Charlottesville and Martha Jefferson Neighborhood Association. Uh,
425 Maple Street. There's actually an address attached to this. The addition of solar security lights and a historic marker at the Maplewood Cemetery. Okay, Martha Jefferson Cemetery is Charlottesville's oldest public cemetery established in 1827. <coughs> this property is located in a national and state register district and also a local historic conservation district. Um, and I did attach some information for you which was interesting about the cemetery. The Martha Jefferson Neighborhood Association was awarded a neighborhood matching grant and uh, they want to install solar motion activated security lighting and also a, a historic plaque at the cemetery identifying it as being in the National Register. So the proposal is to install four four by four poles with lighting in location shown on the attached map and the plaque yet to be designed would be located at the corner of Lexington and Maple. Uh, the main gate to the entrance, uh, the main gate entrance to the cemetery is located on Maple actually. <coughs> Uh, discussion and recommendations, very little review is necessary under the Historic Conservation District guidelines. The purpose of the lighting is to address a trespassing problem. The installation is seen as a pilot project to see if it is effective. Uh, the sign is a good addition. It should be thoughtfully located. Um, they were talking about putting it perhaps behind the wall at that intersection. Another place, and I think that would work, another place might be right on Lexington. There's sort of a two gates and a pedestrian entrance it might go well there so I you know I think I just think it's good that they're identifying that cemetery and the historic resources <coughs> committee has been talking about maybe doing signage for the other two public cemeteries um, Oakwood and uh, Daughters of Zion I believe are the two over off um, Elliot so um, anyway that's all I have is there an applicant present? Hi there. Would you care to add anything to Mary Joy's summary? Uh, thank you. Um, I would just like to add that this proposal for the security lights are for what we see as a temporary solution um, to try out the theory that lighting at night will help prevent the vandalism and loitering that's been going on. There's been significant damage over the past several years and we've documented it over the past two years with photographs and so the the lighting we're proposing is a very modestly priced solution so that we can try this out and um, and then we expect that if we really do see a significant decrease in loitering that we would um, try to come up with a proposal for much more permanent lighting um, that would be much more expensive, but presumably worth it mm -hmm. in the long run. Yeah. Any questions from the public? <coughs> questions from the board? Are the the four by four posts just pressure treated? Are they going to be painted? Um, uh, you know, we we met with um, John Mann, the landscape manager, and his recommendation was we just kind of go with a natural cedar post. Um, cedar. 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 Mm -hmm. And I think that that you know, having seen, I, I'm sorry, I don't have a photograph of what he meant, but um, anyway. it's kind of the least intrusive um, of any other option. It seems. Is there a color? Is this is this a white fixture? Is it? A it's um. It's just it's just metal. It's like a dull, silvery, gray. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have a, um, there's just a sketch of that, not, not a photograph. Um, yeah. But they're also uh, very compact, and we're hoping they'll be relatively um, sturdy. And Do you have a sense of how large yeah. that is? Uh, yes, it's about, sorry, I thought I had that the specs on that paperwork. It's not that, I'm sorry. Um, from the one I've seen, I think it's about, it's less than 12 by 24, I think. I think it's less than, or roughly a foot by two feet. Two feet wide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about the light now or the panel? 
the solar panel. I was talking about the light, not the, the light. panel. Which includes the battery case and the sensor and everything else. Yeah. <clears throat> and again, it's well, I just want to stress that it's a it's a experimental kind of lighting situation <laughs> that we would not propose for permanent And I, I yeah, I appreciate that that before you know whether or not it's working, mm -hmm. why would <laughs> why spend a lot? I think the only challenge for the board is once we've approved something, there's we have no way to say, well, it's got to come down after X amount of time, or maybe we can. No, that was my first question. Um, and so either it's worked or it hasn't. But <laughs> it, the temporary solution is is in you know is in fact temporary and not left as a permanent solution that started as a temporary one. Right. Because. I think the danger is approving things that you wouldn't otherwise, if they were meant to be permanent, proving them in a temporary situation and finding them to become term permanent. Um, that being said, anything else we can do to, to sort of mitigate just its its appearance and just your awareness of it might might also be worthwhile. I don't know if there are different finish options for the light and if the post might get stained. I mean. Uh, there's a number of products, whether or not you do a pressure treated four by four or cedar, <laughs> that could just make that, you know, taking that to something dark would probably tend to just sort of downplay it, make it go away in the landscape. Mm -hmm. Still wouldn't change the fact that it was cheap. And I would think getting a coat of paint on four sides of a four by four shouldn't break the budget, you know, paint or stain. Right. Um, so I think we're in the questions and comments, but uh, we in comments. We're, we're in the boat. Uh, I have two comments, or three. First, I support the D light there. Um, second, not to play attorney, but there was an application some years ago where someone wanted to build an exterior wooden staircase with the condition that it had to be removed in X number of years, and the city attorney said we couldn't do that. That's a recollection. Okay, so uh, I have a concern about a 12 foot tall 4 by 4 It's going to be in the ground 3 or 4 feet and whether it's going to warp and what shape it'll be. And I was wondering if you'd considered steel. <laughs> we hadn't. We really hadn't because, again, we, we saw it as such an experiment that we wanted to go with modest materials and, and, just, and just see what happened before we pursued anything more expensive. And we, we, we definitely look on it as a one year at the most. What, what sets are, the height? Is the height, I mean, is that something that's come up with working with somebody from a lighting standpoint, or is that yeah, a vandalism issue, or is that just sort of a, a guess? It's it's both, and it's that was John Mann's recommendation. Um, we there was a, a solar light, a similar kind of light installed in a in a tree near the worst the worst place that in the cemetery that gets the most loitering and mm -hmm. vandalism, and it just simply wasn't effective most of the year because of the the way that the light, the way the sunlight hit the panel. So the idea was to go ahead, install the solar lights in the in the most effective pass possible, and um, you know, and, and we, we all know it's not a perfect solution at all. That it's it's just not going to look beautiful. But believe me, it's 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 far worse to look at the continuing damage of all the, head, the headstones and yeah, it's, it's it's really dire. I mean, my. And I'm very sympathetic to that, having lived in that neighborhood <laughs> and walked by it. And, and I know the, the issues both in terms of uh, people using the cemetery at night, the loitering, but the, the vandalism, I think, is really um, is really disappointing and, and sort of awful, I mean, considering this sort of lack of respect that it shows. Mm -hmm. So a way to solve that, whatever it is, I, I'd support. I, I'd like to find a way to, whether or not the attorney before uh, maybe there's a way that we can come up with either a definition of what qualifies as temporary that we could use in our language if we ever have to approve things like this in the future. But in this case, I, I would, 
I would like to just say, you know, I don't know what a reasonable amount of time is to test this. I mean, you've been gathering information for a while. Is this, when you say temporary, what does that mean to you? Well, we're, we were assuming we would try for a year mm -hmm. um, through four seasons um, and, and just at the end of that year assess by, you know, the photo documentation and anecdotal and neighbors' um, yeah. information that they can provide if it's been effective. And again, of course, this is, it's city property, so it's, we're simply trying to be stewards <laughs> of, right. of right. the cemetery because we all have So who's, is this, if, if I can ask, maybe it shouldn't matter, but is this a city project? Well, it was a, it's a neighborhood project that we brought. Would be a city budget? To, well, yes. Yeah. See, we, we got a, a neighborhood matching grant. Gotcha. Um, so this is a shared, a joint, a joint thing at this point? Yes. Okay. And this is also a conservation district, so as Mary Jo pointed out in the staff report, we don't really have guidelines governing this type of a project either well. way. I don't. I think we can still provide good comments and discuss it critically, but I personally feel that I can. Um, I'm not applying the ADC guidelines in my mind to this, so I, I can support I don't the project. Think I don't think that's correct, though. Isn't the city individual, or isn't the uh, cemetery individually listed? We proposed it a few years ago. Was it not adopted? It's not, it's not an IP. Was well, it? Okay. Sorry. Well, we don't have a landscape. We don't really have. I mean, that was the same reason that McIntyre Park was not included as an IPP. Not to that. Brennan, I appreciate you pointing that out because that I think was I I was sort of wrongfully starting to no, think no, no, from no, a bit. No, I, mean, no. I, I think the discussion is good, definitely, but I think it's it's so new for us to review conservation. Yeah. District, so yeah. I'm at least I'm just reminding myself to kind of step back. Mr. Chair, not that I would suggest it, but would a steel post be appropriate for this cemetery and with the it's got a steel gate? And I'm, I'm not suggesting that be a requirement, it's just a question. I think it would be appropriate. I think I think landscape lighting of some sort, more traditional well, landscape permanent. lighting would be would be completely appropriate. But I, I think what they're trying to do I understand what is test the impact of this. And if the answer is they might decide that under the beautiful light rendered by the solar panels, the same things happen, then it may be, you know, it may be that they and uh, adding the lighting isn't going to solve it. Maybe they want to spend the money another way. So Given the fact, as, as was pointed out, that the conservation uh, guidelines allow a variety of materials that do not, aren't allowed under the ADC guidelines, one of those being pressure treated or wood that's unpainted in that sense, uh, I, I see this solution as being totally viable. And, and the only thing I'd like to ask is, is if we can sort of as a, as a friendly recommendation that the temporary means temporary and that, you know, at the end of one year, if this hasn't worked, that there would be another solution pursued. But I, even, even that, knowing being a conservation district, I'm less likely to be really, to sort of embed that language in an approval. The reason I ask is if a fairy godfather dropped some four inch by four inch steel posts that were appropriate <laughs> and they would save some money and it, it wouldn't be warped. That was the reason for my question. Certainly I think substituting steel with wood would be uh, totally appropriate and probably preferable from from the standpoint of having a nice straight post. Thank you. A dark color would make it go away during the day yes. when yeah. people look into that. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's a really hard lighting problem. Yeah. I think to get a, a permanent solution, you know, is a, it's a tough one because you'd want you want to keep you have a number of different things to achieve, and it's just sort of hard to. You don't want to floodlight the whole place, and you want to no, exactly. be able to see activity in there, but you want it, the light levels are all going to be relatively low. Then you have the problem of very bright light on some of the street lights around it. Right. The I just think you might want to have a professional lighting person look 
look into it and go to a permanent solution. Yeah, no, absolutely. We would definitely do that. Again, it's it's a trial situation, and we hope it will be a deterrent. Their, their motion activated solar lights. It's not lighting that will be on all evening at all. It's 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 simply to, we hope, discourage loiterers because it's illegal to be in the cemetery after dark, and of course there, there are always loiterers there. I'm going to make a motion unless there's any other comments. Yes, please. <laughs> Having considered the standards set forth within the city code, including city design guidelines for new construction and additions in historic conservation districts, I move to find that the proposed new security lighting and historic marker satisfy the BAR's criteria and compatible with this properties and others in the district, and that the BAR approves the application as submitted with the qualification that it asks the applicants to consider that temporary the temporary solution be reevaluated as as proposed after one year, and if it's not suitable, um, it's certainly that a, either be removed or a, another more permanent uh, approach be pursued. That's not a requirement. That's simply a, a friendly request. I'll second. Do we have any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. And thanks for what you're doing. Uh, the item number four has was removed from the agenda. That moves us to item number five, which is 220, uh, 235 West Main Street. This is for the Omni. Uh, this was a project that had been recently, recently approved for uh, addition of cell tower equipment, or antennas, rather. Right. On, in September of 07, you approved a proposal for um, uh, a similar proposal. They wanted to put the antennas on the roof uh, screen with a faux brick wall. And the reason for the particular type of um, screening uh, was that the um, radio waves would penetrate it. So that was, and so that was actually approved with the requirement that the cap on the screen wall be amended as discussed so that it would match the condition found on the original building, such as a brick cap or metal coping, or something that represents it as closely as possible. And, they, and you also um, were concerned that the mortar be more um, muted and the dimension of the mortar be verified as matching the existing. So you basically approved the faux brick wall as long as it matched the existing brick wall condition. Um, they, the plans were put on hold and never accomplished. The applicant is again requesting approval to add rooftop antennas to the Omni Hotel. And um, the, this, this uh, faux wall will be slightly larger than the last one. Um, both are 9.7 feet tall, uh, but this is 22 by 22 and the other one was 19 by 18. So. Um, but then, in addition to that, um, there are two new parts to this application, and they are to add new um, radio equipment cabinets on the existing roof deck, and also a new diesel generator will be placed on the old Preston Avenue on the ground level and um, next to an existing fenced area. And um, so I guess my issues with this, um, I think that the um, faux brick that you approved before is fine. I think from a distance it, it looks fine, and I think what we talked about before was that um, you, is the screening material considered something temporary like the antennas, or is it considered a permanent part of the building? So I think it does serve the purpose, which is to screen the antennas. Um, the, um, the equipment cabinets on the roof, there is a requirement in the zoning ordinance that any rooftop mechanical equipment is screened. And that's not just in historic districts, but it's anywhere in the city. It's very difficult to enforce, especially when it's an existing building that they're adding it to, because sometimes you just don't know about it. So I would suggest that um, one of the drawings shows the roof cabinets and my concern is they appear over the main entrance, the drive up, you know, the circle off of Ridge McIntyre. That's the side of the building that they're on. 
I think that they will be visible not when you're right at the building but from a short distance away. So I'm thinking that they would be a good candidate to have some type of maybe a metal screen or something that would um, at least obscure them a little bit more than just painting them. And then the other concern is the generator on um, Old Preston. Um, they are required under the zoning ordinance to have an S3 screen, which is either vegetation or a fence. And right now there's a, a brick painted wood fence there surrounding equipment. I think it would look best if that fence was extended to enclose this new piece of equipment so it's all consistent. Um, they were proposing to put um, more bushes around it and there is a very tall, I think it's Burford Holly that's there. So that might be possible to obscure it with the bushes. It just seems like a fence is a more, you know, it's a more dependable solution. Let's put it that way. Um, so you should talk about those things. But other than that, um, that's all I have. Okay. Is the applicant present? Is there anything you care to add? To Good evening. My name is Lori Schweller. I'm an attorney with LeClaire Ryan here in Charlottesville, uh, and I represent Verizon Wireless. With me is Nathan Holland, who is a site development consultant with GDN Consultants, um, consultant for Verizon Wireless. Um, as Ms. Scala explained, we are requesting approval of the, um, the um, faux wall that would surround the antennas that would be placed on top of the Omni. Uh, we have an example of what that would look like. It's exactly the same as the one that was ultimately approved in 2007. Um, we're also requesting um, to, to place three equipment cabinets on the roof of the Omni, which would serve the antennas within the, uh, the brick, uh, faux brick wall. Uh, those cabinets actually are on the mall end of the building, and the drawing, uh, or, or rather the photo simulation that you see in your packet, is probably um, not even schematically correct, uh, more symbolic than schematic, um, just to show the possibility of, of where they might be seen if you were so far away you could see items on the top of the building. Currently, when you walk around the Omni, you can't even see the elevator um, penthouse. And, and um, we're talking about an, an area that's near that, and um, it's not clear to us that you would be able to see these equ equipment cabinets at all. Uh, maybe if I had my daughter do some geometric equations, we could figure out how far away he'd need to be to see them. Um, but we're not sure that any screening is necessary. Okay. Well, third is the, uh, the generator that would be located in an existing compound. And um, when talking about that, I'd like to refer to the picture in, in the application. That photo simulation, I think, is very helpful. Uh, there's some very nice landscaping there uh, that the Omni prefers not to disturb. The, the holly, the very tall hedge along Old Preston uh, Avenue there is, is over six feet high. It's, it's very tall and it screens the red fencing that's, that's already there. Um, the only place you can see into the compound is actually directly from the western end of the mall. And if you look into the into the corner of the compound from there, um, you you're able to see additional landscaping that's there primarily for the benefit of people who stay in the hotel and are looking down on this compound. And what we propose is to construct the generator. Um, the generator won't fit within the current fenced compound, but so we'd like to remove just that portion of the fencing on the corner to construct it there, paint it the same color so it becomes something like an extension of the fencing, the same color. If you increase the fenced compound to include 
the generator, it's going to require removing some of the landscaping. It, it, it just takes away more room. And the Omni prefers that we not do that, and so instead we propose vegetative screening. Okay. Is that it? Sure. <laughs> Any questions from the public? Questions? Questions. There will um, be a there will be a comment period after. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Can it be moved further back towards the building to allow for a fence? Uh, the the way the compound is currently located, the, there are any generators that are within it. There's no room within it to put a generator. So the only real location is in, on the eastern corner of the compound. And, of course, there has to be room for the doors to open to admit uh, technicians. And there, and on the other side of the pathway, there's some, you know, trees and there's also a fire um, plug for the fire department. They didn't want to get near that. It's the first stop to put that in the And that would be the This was pretty much the location that must be picked out. And there's some sewer lines on the other side, close to their doors. There's some sewer lines. What prevents you from using this corner up here? I see what you're pointing. My, my name is Nate Holland, by the way. Um, <clears throat> those are all Dominion um, electrical boxes, and they need, I don't know, two, three, three feet to use whatever equipment they have to operate on or do whatever when they blows up or whatever, whatever <laughs> happens to it. I don't know. And then there's a sewer line. That also is just on the other side of, is just on the inside of the fence as well too, that we we can't get near. So there's really nowhere else to put it except right in there. This seems like a really big generator. Are you saying that you're not going to have to take out any of the plantings that are currently there? Um, there, a couple of them might have to be taken out. And what we've discussed with the Omni um, is actually installing the generator. And once we install it, kind of take a look at what got disturbed, what's there, and how we can possibly re-landscape it. Adding more bushes, adding, you know, plantings, but they would prefer, because they have guest rooms and stuff like that, that overlook that area. They don't want the fence coming any closer to the walkway because your eyes drawn to landscaping and not the, not the electrical boxes and all that stuff that's in there. And then the rooftop units, they are going to be located Towards this end of the building? <coughs> no. Other. This end. Yeah, so if you, uh, just above pretty much the H. Oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah. And you can guarantee that they will not be visible, not just I mean, from I, around the building, but I from mean, all the different distant sites, because you have I mean, higher you, elevations up on West Street. Yeah, and you, have, and you do have higher elevations, and so you might be able to see it as you're you know, uh, more eye level with the top of the building. You also have trees, and there's other buildings, and you're farther away from it. Have um, you done any site sections? I'm, I'm sorry? Site sections? I don't, I don't know what a site section is. Yeah. It's a site section. Something. Go ahead. No, go. Um, it's um, it's showing the design or the location of the, the rooftop mechanical equipment, and then from various vantage points and locations, you do a section, a site section, so that you can try to understand what portion, if any, oh, would be visible. Where lines of sight are. No, so we, from we your have, eye we, have, we haven't gone to that, ex to that extent because of the different <coughs> elevations and just, I mean, the parapet wall in the building is about five feet tall. The cabinets are total going to be uh, nine feet above the deck of the, of, the, of the roof. So you're talking four feet above that parapet wall, that total that these cabinets are going to sit. And they're, sit, they're set back probably about oh, 25, 30 feet from the edge of the parapet. So tr we're trying to push it as far back into the middle of the roof as we can to avoid any visual from 
offsetting properties. And what's the current height of the, the penthouse? Uh, I don't know. The, the penthouse is 79 feet, so our, our stealth wall would be an additional 10 feet. But the penthouse is, do we know what it is above the roof deck? In other words, is it um, oh. 12? So the roof itself is 66 feet tall, yeah. uh -huh. and then the parapet wall is 71.9, so that's additional 5 feet 9 inches, and then the penthouse height is 79 feet. So it's so 13 feet. 13 yeah, 13. Feet the roof line. Right. It's 13 feet, and it's, I think you pointed out, it's difficult to see the penthouse from most locations. Currently, if you walk around the Omni, yeah. you can't see the penthouse. I think it would be. I mean, as you from, it, main, from I mean, a different, a lot of, yeah, a lot of yeah. I mean, that's that's the hard part. Is where do you like? You can drive around the city and go. I, I've, I mean, I've looked at it from two miles away, and I go, well, I can see that, but you're two miles away, <laughs> you yeah. know. And uh, but we it would, has we, to be screened. I mean, that's, see, we would prefer not. I mean, well, okay. <laughs> I mean, if it, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it needs I, to be screened if visible from surrounding properties yeah. and roadways. And those are roadways. Those are important roadways, West Main and all of those places. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, and and I just think you know your screen. You add screening. You're now adding something else visually to look at on the building. Whereas you have cabinets that are, you know, three feet wide and you know eight feet tall. Whereas you then have this big screen wall that draws your attention to it. Well, we're not going to change the guidelines. We're going to figure out how to apply the guidelines. So. <laughs> That's Thank the, you. I, I understand. I'm not, you know, I, I, I understand what the rules are. And, so, you know. Other questions for the applicant? Yeah. Um, thank you. The, this is an emergency generator, right? Correct. Um, how often does it cycle on? And for how long? They do once a month, and they schedule it, you know, the cycle during, and the Omni had asked us to cycle it during, like, nine busy times in a room, which is usually checkout. So like near, and it'll cycle for, for, for for how long? Oh, for how long? About fifteen minutes. Okay, once a month, fifteen minutes. Yeah. And they'll come out and maintain it. And the Omni also has a generator inside that existing compound <coughs> that we're actually replacing the generator for them. Um, and then they're going to have one of their elevators hooked up to the generator. Um, they currently don't have that now. So when the power goes out, they don't have a way to get anybody up to the top floors. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah. Um, is the generator you're replacing for the Omni going to be exactly like the one they have right now? It, it'll be. Um, they actually have one that has a pipe that's on the top, and actually everything will be enclosed. So it'll be very similar to our yeah, generator that we have right there. So the, the, the exhaust, the <coughs> thick exhaust that kind of sticks off on the top, will muffler. be enclosed inside the metal cabinet. Because the generator is from 1980. But the size will be the same, and yeah. then it, and are you really running the fence right into the generator cabinet? Yeah, because the doors are on both sides of the um, of the rectangle, not the short side, but the long sides. So we need to at least have room. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So the yeah, fence will see be the right, right, up, right up to the generator. So help me with see where the fence is. So the fence comes here and just does a little jog back to that door. To that corner. And then that fence yeah. runs right into it right there. Correct. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> so basically just cut the fence, put the generator in. And, uh, well, that makes more sense than what I thought you were doing. So yeah. that, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> is it leaving it open? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. And it won't the, be uh, any opening because they have, you know, the other electrical equipment in there. How about to go to, from the other end, from where Fred was? It seems like there's a lot of space back here that's you know kind of behind the front plane of that fence. Why why couldn't the generator go back in here someplace? So that's <clears throat> that's right where they have their plantings right now. So if you look at but I'm, the drawing, it, no, so, let's look at the plantings. The, these listen. these three things are yeah, something? all that right there. They have they call that their landscaping. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, didn't, they didn't want to have that disturbed. I mean, our original discussion with them was to bring the fence all the way to the walkway, mm -hmm. and and the generator would be completely behind the, the fence. Um, but they would prefer to keep that landscaping because their staff 
that's where their staff comes in and out and they, they hang out out back there. It's they really smooth. Have some sort of you know planting instead of having a fence right there in the walkway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? No. We'll move to comments. Thank you, guys. Comments from the public. And yes, if you wouldn't mind this time. Hi, John Conover. I'm a property owner across the street at 114 Old Preston Avenue. Um, we rent there, so I'm not there myself, but I do represent our, our tenants. Um, when this was built in about 25, 28 years ago, uh, the city made a great effort to make a western entrance to the mall, one of two western entrances to the mall that skirted around the Omni and um, made a significant investment in bearing the power lines. And I think it's a fine example of what we could do elsewhere in the community at a huge expenditure of money. Um, at some point, though, they got a waiver to put the compressor and the generators on the ground instead of on the roof where I believe they uh, should be. Um, I still maintain that, uh, and it's not just for our tenants. It's for um, making that an attractive pedestrian entrance to, to the mall. Um, I think that is still an option to put the generator on the roof, put the generator, uh, I don't know how large it is, at the expense of a parking space or two on the upper deck would be fine. Uh, anything to beautify the entrance uh, along Old Preston Avenue. Uh, I don't have the photo uh, where to put the fence. Uh, I think you guys are better judges of what you can do. I don't pretend to be a designer. I'm a consumer. And I say, hey, that looks good or not. Um, the employee entrance is mostly the smoking uh, uh, room, <laughs> which I guess you can't smoke inside. Um, but you know, moving it elsewhere would be good. Uh, quieter is good. I don't know if you have any control over, uh, uh, we certainly hope it's not going to break the noise ordinance, but um, that they would buy a nice quiet generator. Uh, and if you can locate the fence in a way uh, with the plantings that you think would be best, um, we would probably go along with that. But we're just concerned. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments from the public? Comments from the board then? Well, um, I thought the um, comments just mentioned were, were interesting about even locating it on the roof or even <coughs> elsewhere on the site. I think I could support um, removing this kind of minimal landscaping here to push it back possibly. I absolutely think it has to have a fence around it. I think that could also help mitigate any noise. It doesn't sound like there's going to be a lot of noise, but I think, I think the mechanical equipment has to be screened. And in this case, given its proximity to, to a significantly traveled pedestrian way, that it, it sh absolutely should be screened, ideally, both with fencing and landscaping. Um, having said that, um, you know, not even adding more equipment on the ground and doing it elsewhere on the site or on the building, I think, would be an option I would hope that might be feasible. In terms of the rooftop mechanical equipment, I would say it absolutely has to be um, invisible. If it's visible, it needs to be screened. Um, I don't think, I mean, we've got obviously a lot of examples of unscreened mechanical equipment around here in Charlottesville, which is precisely why it's a, it's a part of the zoning ordinance and not just um, ADC guidelines. It's an actual legal requirement. Um, and I would want to see site sections demonstrating that it is in fact a good Other comments? Oh, I, I'm not as not as concerned about the rooftop uh, cabinets. I, th I think as in 2007, I think the faux uh, brick is a reasonable solution, not an ideal solution, but a reasonable solution for that setting, uh, given the viewing distances. I think the real issue for me is that generator. That's a non you know, it's a non-starter using the generator itself as part of the screen. Um, I think you know were the 
where that whole area, I mean, first of all, given the context, Old Preston Avenue is a pedestrian entrance to the downtown. It is an ac active retail. We've approved a couple of uh, buildings right across the street or uh, a couple of projects right across the street within the last couple of years. Um, there are shops there. There's more and more activity, and I know the city wants to have even more in the future along there. So were the Omni or somebody else to come to us now and propose the fence that's out there as a solution um, for those mechanical appurtenances, um, I don't think this board would approve it. I consider what's there to be a non-conforming uh, situation. Because um, it's not even high enough. Am I reading that right? It doesn't even look tall enough. Uh, I'm not sure, but probably not. Um, so I think that merely cobbling something else into a what's already a poor <coughs> solution is is not a good uh, not a good solution. It's kind of throwing good money after bad. Um, I think a typically in situations like that you'd see a masonry enclosure. Um, and I think where they, you know, had this been coming to us from the get-go, I think, I'm sure that's what would have been um, required there. But I know you can't go back and fix everything there, but I don't think this is a good solution. I think it does at the very least if that generator is going to be on the ground, and I think putting it elsewhere is a certainly something that should be explored, but if it is going to be on the ground, it does have to be fully enclosed in a consistent uh, and aesthetic manner. And I would not let somebody try to argue that the plantings that are in there are sacrosanct. <laughs> they're, they're not. Um, so I think there's going to have to be more consideration given to what happens along Old Preston Avenue there before I can feel comfortable with interpreting that as meeting the guidelines. If I could add right onto that, because I, I agree with all of that and would only add, I don't see any reason why the screening should come any further towards Preston. Uh, it seems like to me there's substantial room behind the line that is established by that fence that you know if that fence got a little bit longer you know it wouldn't be the end of the world for me <clears throat> the one but that's I, somewhat parallel, parallel to the, the, the current yeah. face of the yeah. yeah yeah and i think given the level of concerns i mean i, I think uh, to consider a, a a new masonry screening of the, the whole complex you know might be appropriate uh the other big bigger issues the you know the cabinets for me you know these cabinets are designed pretty nicely these days. I mean, I think the idea that you've got a screen that's further away, you know, that screen becomes just as offensive to me at some point. So I would really love to see the site sections of the cabinets and the screen that you propose. And, you know, I don't know that this, the screen isn't almost as problematic as the cabinets, but I, I think at some point you could do away with the screen, but you need to, you need to sell that. You know, there need to be site sections from critical spots surrounding the property that you know let us know that they're not really to be seen when you say the screen because right now there are cabinets that are outside of the brick enclosure yeah but they're proposing a new screen around those cabinets right no no no, no. 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 that's why i just went with okay the um, no. there's so many lines level drawn level around level. all these things I was, yeah. I was i was missing that but i was i was understanding those are 25 sitting. by 18 was that's a penthouse it's sitting on that's the brick enclosure but i think the cabinets are elsewhere Oh, I thought those were the cabinets we were talking about. Yeah. No. A1. A1? A1. Yeah. Yeah. A1. Which is the roof plan. Yep. Yeah. 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 Or look on A4. Yeah. Oh, this, yeah. this is the penthouse. The yep. current elevator penthouse. Yeah. This is where the, the wall, the, the, the faux wall is going to go yep. on top I, of that. I understand that. And over here on the roof deck yep. is where those cabinets will be. Yep. And I was understanding that. So what is oh, this okay. 18 by... 25 oh, is drawn around those that, cabinets. Oh, that's a steel platform that actually 
Um, what that does is bear the weight of the equipment. Okay. So they have to hit the columns, the structural columns of the building. So yeah. what they do is they have to manufacture this yep. gigantic okay. steel platform. And that sits uh, two feet above the roof deck of the... Okay. Of the yeah, I was, I was interpreting that as a screen wall around that. Uh, okay. okay, so now we got cabinets without a screen wall. Correct. And we that, don't know necessarily and where if, they can be seen from. And if that sits two feet above the roof deck, are the cabinets nine feet or are the cabinets no, the seven cabinets feet seven on top feet. of the two feet? Yeah, okay. correct. So you have, you know, these two cabinets, um, <clears throat> you know, that are you know, three feet wide and seven feet tall. I mean, they, they're like little large refrigerators. So the thing that's, roof, that's 80 feet tall. The thing that strikes me is that, and this is a, a you know, we know this is architects, when you draw an elevation, you're looking at everything frontally as if your eye level is perceiving everything at the same, even at 80 feet in the air. So standing on the mall, looking up with that perspectival shot, if, if, if in fact it's, and I haven't tested this, difficult to see the top of the penthouse uh, before they installed the brick enclosure, Fober enclosure on top of it, then I would presume it's going to be difficult to see the top of those cabinets. But Yeah, because as you, as I you think stand if the, at the base, you can't see it. You right. can go <clears throat> several blocks back, and you, there's trees, and there's everything else that kind of blocks your view of, of that building. You can't even, it's hard to see the army when you're several blocks away from it. So am I? Yep. That's where you'll see it. And yeah, yeah. And that's from the staples. That's across the street. And yeah, that's the and that's, the, and that's even at a lower elevation than that's West Main, which is the bill. <laughs> right. So I mean, you can already see mechanical up there. So. Oh yeah, I mean, they already have stuff up there that you can see right now. I mean, right. That's so the, that's that's why I'm like, just prove to me it's not going to be visible, and then it's a done deal for me. <laughs> I don't know if I can. I mean, you can, what do you mean like section. visible? So if you can see it from. A side We're section miles away. away. I guess that's my question. I think it's yeah. it's the the area you've got a <coughs> you've got a great map right here in the front, the local map. Okay. Um, and I mean, you've already got the pictures from certain locations showing you where you're going to be able to see right. if it's visible or not. So a simple site section from there, that elevation, as compared. But does the site? I guess my question. You put a and, person. And I'm, I'm just asking yeah. a question. I mean, does it take into account trees and buildings and? all that other stuff. I mean, because that's kind of how I, I, I view it. And I'm coming from the non, you know, I'm the late person here. Well, a good and so I guess I, I I'm, I'm having done here, that Here's before, the thing. So we, I guess I'm. Trees exist at certain points, but we all move around. Well, <laughs> so sections can also be misleading because you take them at a certain moment and they can be used to describe something in a very specific way that is a very isolated moment. But I think if you put somebody on the sidewalk across the street uh, of Ridge McIntyre from across the street from the hotel, and you drew a section with that wall and drew the top, and took a line from what would be somebody's an average person five six five <coughs> five, where their eye level would be, and then you drew a line to the top of the parapet, and you let that line continue, you would see quickly, depending on how close or far those boxes are whether or not they would be Visible. outside of the, okay. the cone of vision okay. or within it. Okay. And that, that would be the, perf the purpose okay. of doing the site section. And you can also take a picture from that vantage point because that then allows, provides context to the site section yeah. showing what actually landscape exists in that area. So you can say that, well, the site section says it's visible, but I'm standing here, here's a photograph of it, and you can see okay. that there's a bunch of sure. okay. that, that's, that that's what we mean. Okay. Right. I if I, were, if I sure. was a lay person with this problem, you know, the site section still, you know, you're requiring some kind of technical expertise. If I was a lay person, I would get three refrigerator boxes and go up there and put them at the elevation they're going to be at, and then we, we could go around and take a bunch of photographs and show, show us where you can see it. And okay. you know, if you convince us that it's far enough away <laughs> and the elevation is rising at that new topography such that you know, you're never going to really okay. be able to hide it, then that, that makes sense to me. That make that, that's a great idea. So let me ask you this. Would the, would the location <laughs> of these cabinets be acceptable as long as there was screening? Well, that was back to my point. At some points, I find screening as offensive as I do cabinets. So, you know, 
but again, we're not changing yeah. the guidelines. Yeah, we're, we're administering them. So, so my point would be that could, because I think there's there's there are the cabinets and there is the the brick faux brick enclosure on one side that seem to me to be relatively straightforward, with the exception of the question as to whether or not the cabinets need to be screened. But and if and, you and accept, an I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. There's an example of that screening, that type of full brick screening around the equipment on top of the Hampton Inn that's yeah. down on yeah. Yeah. Main Street. So that's and we've got that. And yeah. Okay. I didn't so know if you did or not. We approved that. Oh, okay. So, so there's that, and then there's the other question, which is the generator question, which my sense from the comments I've heard so far, and, and my feeling would be the same, is that the, the piece of equipment itself cannot be used also as the screening for other equipment, and that it should be, even if there is some cost, um, brought within the enclosure that exists, even at the expense of some small shrubs and some minor landscape that exists there at the end. And I think more to the point that that not only would a, a different enclosure probably have been required now, but I suspect if this had come in front of the board now that there would have been a much more stringent application of the guidelines period about what happens on a street edge that is a pedestrian experience that it, you know, the Omni needs somewhere to have its utility spaces and its back doors and its garages and its trash and all this other stuff. But the fact that it happens to be on a street that is, is a street and is being developed as a pedestrian way and has other commercial ventures, I mean, we've gone through a lot of things with other buildings that say, listen, you just can't, you can't put a big blank solid wall or a 25 foot wide garage door opening or giant mechanical vents on this wall. It needs to be detailed in such a way that's consistent with the other buildings, the buildings across the street and the other ones around it. So I already feel like it, it probably gets a pass in the sense that it's got a lot of mechanical equipment that seems like it's screened okay, but it also has some issues for the neighbors. And I think at the very least that that <coughs> equipment piece be located, even if it requires moving some things around in a way that keeps the continuity of the enclosure. And, and probably reinforces the planting around that. But Could I- Could it be relocated on the site entirely? <laughs> yes. I, <laughs> but he's I already mean, invested I've considerable already, yeah, time. I mean, I, in dealing into, with the Omni, I mean, they're, understandably, they have parking. You know, I talked to them about putting it in the parking area, and they just don't want to lose any parking spots. That parking lot um, is empty. <laughs> Hey, if this, if this know wasn't know. already, I, you know, so the problem with the rooftop is structurally, can we put it on the roof? And that we've investigated, that's what we had first looked at originally. And after looking at it again, it's just not possible to put it on the roof. And um, the way, the, way the, the roof is designed and the building is engineered is just not structurally, they would prefer to put it on the ground. I mean, I think given given all the other equipment that already exists there, <clears throat> I don't I don't see that making them move one piece is going to be the the tipping point that's going to move all the other stuff. And so, maybe in a practical sense, well, you're adding one, right, yeah. and replacing one. Cor so correct. Two new pieces. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's one there that's already existing that's getting replaced, which right. is there. So two new pieces. So two new. Yes, correct. I think they should be hidden. I, well, I mean, I'm not saying know, they shouldn't be hidden. No, I mean, like, in the, I agree with Aaron. I mean, the parking lot is empty 90% of the time. Yeah, there's a lot of empty spots. It's a huge site. I think they, they've there's got a lot of, of alternatives. I what think. if we were to keep it where it is now and just fence it? I mean, do you want to be able to not see it at all? I mean, is that, I, I guess that's, I'm, I'm asking, I'm throwing this out because I'm asking questions <coughs> would, you know, before I go back to Verizon and the Omni. Want to be able to tell them, hey, this is what we can and can't do. And uh, design it doesn't make for a pretty entrance to the mall. I'm seeing a big. So, would bit. you want to cover it like completely? Like the top of it can't be able to see it at all, kind of design. Instead well, of. Because right now you can see the generator <laughs> over the top of the fence. I'm not speaking right for anybody else here, but I want to see it not in this location, but a different location on the site. So, there's at least two of those. If you want to dig a vault <laughs> and put it underground. <laughs> and add more things. That's here. I mean, that we would prefer like that to keep work. it where it's at and move the fence. I mean, that's what our what Verizon will do. The Omni, they own the property, and so we have to do, you know, we have to work with 
them and they're the owners. Totally, and it's an unfortunate site because it is. It's a, it's it's unfortunate. I mean, I walk up that every day from work to the mall and do errands and stuff, and and it is like a big back yard of mechanical equipment and I just think that there is a tipping point and this is one more and it just adds more to that clutter and, um, and mechanical industrial feel and then it's like in the future one more I think I think this could be the beginning of a great opportunity of thinking about where else they could put mechanical in the future because they're going to need more eventually at some point and this yeah. this this is already built out enough and I don't think I think don't think adding to that is going to do anything for the site or the pedestrian experience. Typically, it's not an emergency generator. It's close to the where the electricity comes to the building, so you don't have 500 feet of yeah, wire. Yeah, there cable. are issues of feeding panels and so that kind of thing. But if this is for their right, but putting equipment, it, it's a different. Put it in on the parking deck. There will be other issues to deal with. As far as and yeah. maybe the parking deck isn't the solution. I mean, so maybe, but, but it sounds like that you need a, a landscape architect, number one, to deal with this area rather than okay. an engineer. I mean, uh, we could landscape that entire strip there. I mean, we could put gigantic bushes. I mean, they just, they feel that, you know, looking down at that, your eyes are drawn right to the electrical equipment when you all there is is just is it, but it's important is their gas star that pedestrians walk on the sidewalk and the people who have businesses that uh, I understand are and, and, at least and that, equally important that hedge I'm not sure they're hollies that hedge does a great job of screening that <coughs> uh, that's a huge hedge um, where are we going okay Mr. so <laughs> I'm looking down there I've heard at least a number of people say that the the generator is an issue. It seems to me that the generator does not have support in its current location, nor are we going to design the location or design the surrounding or, I mean, we've given some guidance. I think that some attention needs to be paid to that. I think that in my mind that the brick enclosure on the roof, which is essentially the same thing that's been approved before with some small modifications, seems to have support. Certainly I would support that. Um, and then the only other question are the, the cabinets, which my point was, if those are acceptable, acceptable in their current location, if they are screened, if they're visible, then I would say that there may be a way to form the motion that says that they're approved in their location, and if it's discovered that they are visible, that subsequent screening will be required. Then they'd have to come back with the screening, right? Come back, yeah, with the subsequent screening plan. So they don't have to go through the exercise of putting up refrigerator boxes and proving to us. We'll see it once they go up. And if, if it's not in compliance because it's a zoning ordinance thing, it's not just a BAR thing, they will have to come back and then do whatever required screening is, is there. So they can locate them where they've shown them and <coughs> It doesn't matter to us if, if, obviously, if they're invisible, and if they're visible, then we'll go through the screening process. But if you were to find, say you do site sections or the refrigerator test, um, that they were to be visible, would you want to put them in a different location and make them invisible, or are you, this is exactly and where you, they need this, to go? This is pretty much where they have to go because okay. structurally, and you have to hit the columns and all okay. that stuff. Okay, I just wanted to check. It's pretty much the only location. Okay. So I would point out it's right over the corporate logo. <laughs> it's right on axis with the entry. I think it's going to look kind of goofy to have all that junk sticking up there. But I mean, this junk really doesn't really look good right now. So I would just. I mean, and that's taken from a distance. I mean, when you're pulling into it and looking up at it. When you're pulling up the driveway. Right. Well, yes. rooftops are never visible when you're right underneath. Yeah, yeah, I know. Are they? Are they? No, no, no. But it's, it's always from the distances. Of the rooftop mechanical equipment on top of the Monticello Monticel Hotel used to be screened. Can we introduce that again? But, I mean, what you see for miles around is, what's, is gigantic mechanical equipment. What's not being said is that, you know, had this building, well, <laughs> would this building itself qualify right now if it were? <laughs> proposed as a design so it's yeah. you know I, I think when you look at the impact of the equipment on the roof and on the overall 
on the property, I think it's negligible. I think the impact relative to the district is the thing that we're trying to protect yeah. and to yeah, the neighbors. Yeah. So. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'd like to propose a motion because I think we've talked quite a bit about this. And I'm going to propose a motion that we accept the faux brick enclosure as presented as well as the location of the cabinets with the um, requirement if they turn out to be visible from a right of way as is described in the zoning ordinance, then screening will have to be done. And, and that we will not approve the current location for the generator and that that'll have to be something that you guys come back with an alternative proposal. So having considered, set, having considered the standards set forth within the city code, including <coughs> city design guidelines for site design, I move to find that the proposed antenna with faux wall screening, equipment cabinets, and equipment cabinets satisfies uh, the BAR's criteria and guidelines and are, and are compatible with this property as others in the district, and that the BAR approves the application um, for those two items as submitted with the, the qualification that should the cabinets turn out to be visible from a public right away as described in the zoning ordinance, then there will have to be a subsequent application for screening of those cabinets. Um, I'm going to separate this and make a separate motion that says uh, relative to the, to the generator because I didn't know how to do opposite things in one motion. So let's do that and then we'll make a separate motion for the generator. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Uh, any opposed? Well, we just ask them to defer on the generator. <laughs> well, and so that's that's an option as well. Would you like to defer on? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, in that case, why don't we move to accept move to absence. Accept the applicant's request for deferment. And I'll, Okay. Is there any discussion? No. All in favor? Uh, uh, no. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Guys. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I'm going to make my final disclosure of the night. <laughs> we had disclosure on almost <laughs> every item. I happened to own a property adjacent to 418, but I, it was, I feel like it's not a company. Okay. And I as well, um, two doors down, because I don't feel like a conflict. Okay. That being said, we move to the next item, which is 418 East Jefferson Street, and this is for the replacement of 15 windows. Okay. Um, all right. The applicant is requesting approval to replace 15 windows with Pella Architect Series double hung white one over one aluminum clad wood replacement windows. The color will be poplar white to match the existing windows. The window openings will stay the same size. Uh, some of the windows being replaced are newer one over one windows and some are older metal casement windows, possibly from the 1921 remodeling. The new windows will be placed in front of the metal frames. Eight windows are located on the west elevation facing the parking lot and six of those are metal, two of those are one over one. Three metal windows face north toward the access driveway from Jefferson Street you can see those windows from Jefferson Street, but just very briefly, if you walk by. I don't think you could see them driving by very well. And then there are four paired one over one windows that face south toward a light well, light well and there you, you just, real, no one can see those except the adjacent building. So recommendations and discussion. This building fronts on Court Square, but the windows to, replace, to be replaced will not be visible except the three facing north, which will be visible down the entry driveway. The BAR should determine if the windows warrant replacement, then the BAR should approve the specific type of replacement window, including material color, sash dimensions, and installation details. So um, that's all I have. Okay. And would the applicant care to add anything to Mary Joy's summary? The, um, the, it's a Renaissance school. And I, the reason I requested it, so those little crank windows with the metal handles, there's nine of those, and basically all those are broke off and, and they got big air leaks. So what they've done, they just take plastic over the inside of it during the winter and the summer just to try to block the air. And finally, they, the guy, we, he said, this 
we got to make some decisions. We couldn't leave them like that because number one, got to replace them. And so we went with the Architect series because that's the same series that's put on the new juvenile building, and it looked identical to that on the profiles. And that's what you see on the other page. The other windows that are look similar to it now that on the back, they just don't work. They can't open them. The kid, and that happens to be the signs for them. And they just fall to and they don't work anymore. So X is going to look just like it. We're just replacing them with windows they can't open. So it's about what that amounts to. So I think it's about all I can say. It's pretty straightforward. So this portion of the building dates to really date to 1826 and remodeled in 1921? Yeah. I think it's actually been three times in there because like three different, there's another section that's on the front and you're just starting to see a tip of it on the left. Those are 1920. Yeah, in and then it just way. kept going back and because we've been through the building there renovating and it, you just, it's added on, added on, added on. Yeah, this building has changed a lot over time. Yeah. We used to have porches on the front and stuff. All yeah, this actually, the, all bad. these windows you see in here, they're actually just facing the parking lot with every building around. You can't even see it. Like you said, the only window you could see, if you had to stop by and look down the alley, you might see three because it's only eight foot drive, and then you just go back in there. Yeah. And so I think what he's trying to do is try and get a little continuity and kind of keep them same, and eventually he's going to have to do them all anyway. It's just a matter of time, probably. But. Okay. And here's question? the other downside. If you aren't strong at doing it, we purchased these, we've ordered, I know I think we do, because they're trying to get it done by August the 28th or something, the kids are coming back. He's willing that if he lost the money, he'd lose the money, but he's hoping that doesn't happen. I didn't, we didn't know what to do because time's the essence, because this, you know, he didn't the last minute, he said, God, we've got to do something, and I don't know, that's where he is. Okay. But he's also, you know, he understands it not, might not go through as well, but I couldn't see much that, ones look so similar what we're doing we've already used them I thought it would go so are there any questions from the public we don't have any public left so <laughs> questions from the board we'll move to questions I, we have one public member sorry you <laughs> <laughs> seemed questions from the board and if you look at the one I've got circled on the one window, I'll just tell you, yep. the size of the casement will be just about like, the, it'll look just like the ones that we're replacing. So really not really changing anything. And the, the casements are going to be replaced. Everything's replaced That's with one over one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Comments from the public? Comments from the board? It's on a... Secondary, tertiary elevations, <clears throat> not visible. And it's replacing non-historic windows and that have already been replaced. Yeah, so yeah. I, I support no it. Objection. They're from 1921, but they're not original to the structure itself. And they're not really compatible, actually, with the style of the structure. Those were used primarily in the 1920s and 30s. Those are industrial style windows. Well, it sounds like you're ready to make a motion for a window replacement, which I think oh, you should you should go down in the record books for, for that. And you're the only one that should make that motion. Having considered the standards set forth within the city code, including city design guidelines for rehabilitation, I move to find that the proposed window replacement project satisfies the BAR's criteria and is compatible with this property and other properties in this district, and the BAR approves the application as submitted. I would just also like to say thank you for not adding any muntins at all. Hey, what? Muntins at oh, all. Man, it's nice and simple. <laughs> yeah. I'll second. We have a second. We have any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Great. All right. Thank you. Easy. Congrats. That's pretty good. That generator guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. The guy. Okay. We have uh, one more item on the agenda, and this is for um, a recommendation for individually protected property is 104 <laughs> Stadium Road. Yeah which um, it, it really isn't on the stadium road, so let's clear that up first of all. As you drive down um, Emmett Street and then you turn right to go down Fontaine Avenue, or actually JPA at that point, um, it's a little stone house that sits on the right-hand side of the road. You can barely see it. So um, City Council wanted to sell the corner property next to that, which is vacant, to this property owner, and as a condition of the sale, um, they um, said that this property should become protected. 
So that's why this is before you. Um, it was initiated by city council. So um, we're happy to bring it to you. It's a very cute little house. So basically, this is an exceptionally well-preserved example of a 1927 English Tudor Revival-style residence built for a university professor. So in that sense, it's very close to the houses that are in um, Gildersleeve Wood, Ochre Circle area. The um, owner called me today, Rick Jones, and actually said he thought it was built in 23, so we're looking into that, but we're pretty close to that date. So. Um, Basically, I just want to say that I recommend this designation as an individually protected property. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Seems like something that I would support. I have a motion. I, I will make a motion. Is there any, are there any concerns about this? Having considered the standards set forth within the city code, including city criteria for additions to or deletions from districts or protected property list, I move to find the BAR recommends that city council should designate 104 Stadium Road, the McLeod House building and property as an individually protected property. Mary Joy, I just want to clarify, that designation applies to the entire parcel, not just the house, correct? That's correct. Okay. Seconds. And by entire parcel, the, the parcel they also the, the new sole piece too, or just, it's just this. Just, just this parcel. Right, just this. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, yeah, I just want to clarify. So <coughs> the the person who's purchasing the property next door could still do anything they want next door. Um, I don't know what the situation is there. I don't know the details they were talking about trying to keep that as open space, and I don't know if they're protecting that some other way. Other Okay. We tried to get it all on IPP and they wouldn't, you know, it's a separate parcel and with nothing on it, so they wouldn't um, do that for this, yeah. for the other parcel. I think that was the intent, though, to protect yes. the green space. I think I there's a, some kind of, the city I think there's some kind of covenant in the contract. Okay. So, um, do we have a second? Do we have a second? Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mayor no. George, would you? Okay. Uh, Express our appreciation to Kristen for a nice, well done, nice job, well done. And, uh, Great photos for, yes. for the research. Uh, matters from the public. Seeing no public, we'll skip that. Other business. I noticed that Mary Joy has included a agenda for our retreat, August sixth. <coughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two hours. <laughs> um, I haven't read this yet, but I, I, I do think that one of the things that came up today, which has come up a lot lately, this question of how you regulate multiple tenants within um, one building, how we deal with that might be an interesting thing to keep <clears throat> in mind whether or not it fits into this agenda or not. But it seems like... Um, as we have more multifamily construction, more and more in this town, it's going to be an issue as people start renovating and changing things. Um, so, any other business? And one other item we might discuss at that meeting is when we approve standing seam metal roofs, we tend to talk about the pan width, we talk about the ridge vent, but we do not talk about the height of the seams. Mm -hmm. And there's a recently approved project in a residential section. It's got at least two inch high standing seams. And it does not look residential at all. And I'm not suggesting that we can do anything about that, but it's just one more thing that we need to be aware of, I think. Well, and I think it's also, if we've approved it, I mean, it would be worth going back and looking at the application, seeing if they gave a height on the, they may not have. I think typically, God, you don't. Yeah, it, I mean, it still would be worth checking, just checking the notes. I don't know which project. It's a pool house uh, uh, social hall. Mm. Mm. Really? It's, I didn't measure it, but it's, 
in stock. That is surprising. <laughs> okay. Well, I, it would be worth just checking what the record is. Thanks. Anything else? Adjournment? I move we adjourn. I'll second, second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay.